Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide, and this time we're getting it all in the classic point and click Broken Age. Now this was developed and published by Double Double Fan, and will usually be available for just 11 99 but again, it's totally free on Xbox Game Pass right now, so as usual, get it while it gets good. So we play as two characters in the game, Shay and Vela, who have similar things going on in their lives in two drastically different worlds. Now before the worlds collide and the world is up for a worldy, uh, it'll all make sense later, uh, but we basically need to go through a whole bunch of point and click stuff, uh, get our way out through a lot of weird stuff just happening in the game. Now, so as for achievements in the game, there are around 24 or 25 I think that are missable and some that are quite frustrating, um, so kind of challenging but not too difficult overall. Uh, the first two acts are a breeze, but it is Shay and Vela's Act 2 where things get a little bit more complicated. But again, nothing to the point you never play it again. It ain't ever that bad. Now, one more thing to note, and it's a big thing. Make sure you have a new browser on your computer or phone and a piece of paper or three and a pen. Trust me, you'll need these to solve a few random puzzles later on. When we grab, uh, when we get there, I'll remind you to grab some stuff. So, near panic, near bras. So, uh, plus, we have to do a one-hour speedrun at the end of the game, which is easier than it sounds, so don't panic. Overall, we're going to be looking at around six or so hours to get this done. So, with that being said, then, let us begin. Now, there are two acts for uh, for each character in the game. So, you've got Vela on the left and Shay on the right. So, we're going to start off with Shay's bit of breakfast aroni first. Get him kicking off. So, one looks like she's on Earth. The other boy looks like he's in space. And not even drug tripping, he's just in literal outer space so far. So we're going to start with the right guy, Shay, with the world's worst haircut. Now what we're going to do, you can actually press uh, the B button to skip any dialogue and any cutscenes, so that's what we're going to do. So you press the A button, and in the top left corner it'll say press B to skip uh, the cutscene. As you can probably just about see. So that's what, so that's what we're going to do. We're not going to mess around um, watching any cutscenes in this video again. It's just more to save time. So anytime there's a cutscene, I will press the B button to skip it. And just go on to the next part. But here we have a missable achievement already. So when the arm comes up with any breakfast cereals, always choose the top answer. Which will basically be, um, basically no. <laughs> so just keep going until I think... This uh, robot arm's given us about 12 different cereal choices. Ooh, Honey Hollow Grahams, or Grahams is the pronunci uh, the right pronunciation there. Uh, but yeah, so just keep saying basically no. So yuck, no, not that, not in that kind of mood, blah, blah, blah. Until we get to, it'll always be the top answer, by the way. So don't panic about um, taking your time or whatever. It will always be the top answer until we get to... You know, these, these cereals are actually looking quite banging, apart from that one that looked like a bird poop. Um, but, you know, we've, we've all eaten worse. Mutant Munch, kind of sounds like uh, gonorrhea. Giant Slime, not even going to tell you what that reminds me of. And this is the one we should say. So when we get to Splarg, say Splarg seriously. Are you trying to make me unplug you, computer? <laughs> Splarg. I don't even know what the hell this is supposed to be, but she gives it for us anyway. Now, coming up to it, so this is the first missable achievement then, to basically say a no for all the cereal until we get to that point. What we're going to do now is nothing. So we're going up for another um, <laughs> another missable achievement, and it's basically for basically ghosting the spoon, and where the spoon gets paranoia. So this is a kind of like a real-life Tinder relationship. Yes, it was good while it lasted, but we are going to just ghost you for a while. So just... Do nothing until he basically says, I think he says, stupid, stupid, stupid. And that's when we can pick up the spoon and then we can uh, start messing around with the inventory stuff. But again, so just leave it for now. Have a look at your surroundings, which is not a lot at this moment in time. I was on a waiting list for months. Uh, even though you've been very hard on us spoons in the past, even cruel, I... I just wanted you to know that working with you has been my lifelong dream. Oh god, I'm so embarrassed. I'll just shut up now. But seriously, you should eat. What missions today? Okay. Shutting up. Man, I'm telling you what, this spoon has some paranoia issues. You need to get that worked out if you wanted this relationship to work, Mr. Spoon. So anyway, as soon as he says, stupid, 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 then you can press the A button to pick him up, and there we go. So, bottom left-hand corner, 
you can press the Y button to open up the inventory, and we can, um, it, the spoon should already automatically be in our placement, so press the A button on the cereal. But for any, anything else, uh, in your inventory, normally you'll have to uh, just press left and right on the D-pad, and then press the A button, I think, to get it up. So, for this one, what we're going to do is we go to the bottom option there, which is better suit up and investigate that foreign body. Again, I'm just skipping all cutscenes and all dialogue um, for this bit, so as soon as we keep skipping the cutscenes, we're going to say, like I said, better, up, better suit up and investigate that foreign body, which could be considered quite rude. So when Shay comes out looking like a bad uh, Krusty the Clown outfit or something, <laughs> like he's just about to go to the circus, keep pressing the A button there to keep skipping to the right. Now, as you see the like little circles, the little lines in a circle, that's basically when you know that you are on something and that you can either pick it up or interact with it. Um, so it can be a little bit weird in terms of, in, you know, in this game in terms of, um, it might not always look like you're about to pick something up, but it usually is, as long as that sort of line circle is there. Um, so for this one, what we're going to have to do now is, we're going to choose, we have to defend the friendship circle. This is very babyish, but it is my kind of job, to be honest. So, we have to defend the friendship circle. Now, what we got from that foreign body, which is, again, quite rude, you've basically just stolen off a dead foreign body. And, well, as long as that's all you've done. Um, the, we basically got a parcel. Now, press the Y button to open up our inventorious. And then, uh, press right on the D-pad to go to the present, and then use the present on Shay, which will open up a, um, a present called a Grabbing Gary. Now, that'll probably be considered rude again, uh, since there's going to be no Garys left soon anyway. So, <laughs> what we can do, press the Y button again, and use the Grabbing Gary on Shay. So you just press the A button with the Grabbing Gary in hand on certain items to do that. Um, so again, press the Y button, make sure Grabbing Gary is there, and use the bean bags just to the left of us there. Um, so yeah, this is all for an achievement. You've got to use Grabbing Gary on 20 different items and the spoon on 20 different items. So again, use Grabbing Gary, use them on either of the controls, either to the one on the left or the bottom left corner there. So that'll be the third one. Now you can open up your inventory again and use it on the little big planet weird... I mean, what's that sticking out of his head creature? The old ball bag creature, let's call him. And next, open up your inventory and you can use it actually on the spoon as well. So again, it's just pressing the A button as long as you've got Grab and Gary in hand. And that should be 5 out of 20. So now what you can do, press left on the D-pad and you will interact and you'll basically get the spoon up. So use that spoon with Shay and that'll be 1 out of 30. So, when we've done that, just interact with the weird ball bag creature. I don't know why he's a ball bag creature, he just is now. And, he, yeah, she'll go nuts. And that will end, lovely. So you should have had five items there on your grabbing Garys, and the one for the spoon. Next, we're going to need to help those avalanche victims. So the very top one, let's, let's be nice, let's be kind. So, every new room that we're going into, we're going to use Grabbing Gary on stuff. So, the first one, what we're going to do is um, head to the left again, use the cursor, and then press the A button to get Shay to walk to places. Get your Grabbing Gary out again, Y, right in the D-pad, and then use it on the door in front of us. And also use Gary, <laughs> Grabbing Gary, on the banana split, which is to the right of us. So, that one is 7 out of 20, probably like 22 it unlocked for after me. Go to the right and then use the Grabbing Gary on the trapped creatures as well. I'm not sure if you can use it actually on the ice cream. Um, I actually didn't do that, so didn't bother. Um, click, well, I did try it as it turns out. Right, get your spoon out, use it on the ice cream. And that is how you finish this solid Halo style Gears of War seriously 6.0 mission. Yeah, okay, ball bag creatures. Calm down, calm down. Okay, so, we are now going to get a cutscene. It's, it's been a tiring day of basically playing with babies and having a robot do all your crap for you. Which, you know, that'll come in mega handy for me. Especially if I'm feeling, um, uh, you know, winky winky. Hungry. You know, it'd be easy to get, get fed by another robot.
Don't know what you little gets keep thinking about. Anyway, now we can choose. Sure, what difference does it make? It's all the same crap. Even though Shay looks like one of the most ungrateful, long-nosed little quiff bags I've ever seen. So he's going to choose that. And then we're going to go back onto the bridge for the last time. And now what we're going to choose is let's catch that runaway train. I mean, literally, this is the epitome. This is what everyone wants in a job. Isn't it? Just look at that squeaky, squeaky fun console. And uh, yeah, it'd be super cool. So we have to do a little thing. Obviously, we have to do a lot of little things in games. So this on um, big thing, the big celery looking thing on the right is the sleeping man. So use the grabbing Gary on the sleeping bridge man. Also, you, you've got to use the spoon on the sleeping bridge man. So make sure to get those two in first. So the grabbing Gary on the sleeping bridge man and the spoon as well. So our little uh, <laughs> long ball bag friend there is grabbing onto the thing. What you can do, after you've got the grabbing Gary and the spoon on him, Press the A button on him, and he will open up this big, uh, big tongue, so we can supposedly get across. But what we're going to do is, just before we go across, we're going to uh, press the A button again, so his tongue goes back into sleepy mode, and we are going to fall through the hole. So, press the A button now, and then as soon as the character on the left there, let's go, press the A button again. So, press the A button on him now. And that means pure death, game done. It's an easy rattle like a game style 6000 TA's game score. Well, apparently not this time. Uh, somehow we survived, but we did unlock the whoops achievement. So that's already 3 out of 45. Just a long while to go. <laughs> right. So there we go. So we've got the grabbing Gary, the spoon on the sleeping bridge man, and the whoops achievement. So uh, interact with and get rid of this cutscene by pressing the B button. We should now already have the screwdriver. So. What we can do is click on the blanket. Um, well, we've got things to do first. So again, we're going to be using grabbing Gary. So again, press the Y button. Go to the right there with the little robot grabbing Gary and use it on your bed. Oh, something stinks, man. What the hell is that? What's that crusty stuff there? That better be pastry. And then we can use the grabbing Gary on the dad orb as well on top. So that should be 11 now. So on the bed and on the um, dad orb. Now we're going to use the spoon on Shay's bed. Whatever that stain is, I am not ta I'm not tasting a sample of that. No, 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 no. I got tricked by that before. I thought it was pineapple juice. Anyway, walk to the right there and pick up the tank of compressed air, which is like the green look looking fart jar, we'll call it. And then, we then what we could do is walk a little bit further to the right and we can now see the vent that is to the ground of the right that says uh, where mission cancel is there's a little vent there so what we're going to do is use grabbing gary on the closed vent it can be a little bit hard to see sometimes mind but uh, make sure to use grabbing gary on the closed vent and that'll be number 12 but you have to do that before we do this instruction so we can now use the screwdriver on the vent which kind of looks like a wine bottle opener type thing and we can grab the inflatable dolls. <laughs> We're having crusty stains and inflatable dolls. What the hell is Shay up to? He is a teenager, I suppose. So open up your inventory and we can use the grabbing Gary on the inflatable doll while it is still deflated. So make sure to do that one before we open up our inventory again and use the tank of compressed fart jar on the inflatable doll. So that now creates a doll that supposedly looks like Shay. So Shay's making crusty stains with himself anyway now we can use grabbing gary on the inflatable doll that has now been inflated so that should now be 13 and 14 out of 20 and now what we could do is walk back over to the left to the inflatable doll and put that one on shay's bed well at least there's no uh crustilicus is going to be added with this inflatable doll unless shay is really really attracted to himself and there are weirdos out there like that who find themselves so attractive they just at the sight of themselves, which is not gross at all. So we're crossing the room again, and we're going through the vent that we got the um, Crestilicus uh, inflatable doll from. And I'll tell you what, if our orb mother and father can't see that that is a um, see-through quilt, they got some problems. So welcome to Marek's Hub. So... What we need to do is, uh, well, it was a cutscene. That would have been a cutscene, and basically what he's done is give us an, a star a star chart, which is this blue-looking blueprint type thing. 
we'll just call it a blueprint there, so the star chart. Now we're going to the vent to the left of us. Uh, that is between Shay and the door on the left. Now before we do anything else, once again, what we're going to do is climb down the ladder, which should be directly in front of us. Like right there. Come in. All right, we're there. Now we're going to use grabbing Gary on the tapestry, which is basically the big carpet thing directly in front of us. So that is the 15th now out of 20. So this one comes um, quite a bit. The spoon takes a little bit longer. So we're going back up. And now what we're going to do is give the star chart to the space weaver. So the blueprint, make, again, always white open it. Tree, right on the D-pad, get to the blueprint, give it to the star weaver. So you, don't, you shouldn't have to do anything else now. We can skip the cutscene. And he's going to take us to the Talon Nebula pretty much immediately. Um, so I think if you do interact with him again, it does make a difference. We end up in the same Nebula. Now, what we're going to be doing on the next bit, there is an achievement for doing... You've got to grab like these ten weird-looking sock puppet things. Um, and there's ten of them to grab, and you have to do it without making a mistake. So go to the right, but what you can do is make a manual save before you do each one. So if you make a mistake, you can uh, exit out of the game, load up the game, and you'll be in the same spot. So that is what we will do. So I show you on screen anyway where I make the manual saves. But what we have to do is on the left-hand side, the, the first like five or, th or six I think are quite easy because they don't move. So go ahead, make a manual save. I always make two, always like a just-in-case thing as a backup. Just in case somehow the backup gets backed up and the uck up means you get ucked up more. So, talking to Marek then, what we need to do is on the top left hand corner, we need to get the boom arm down. So press that flashy one. And now, when the boom arm is directly above the sock puppet, weird big headed Stewie from Family Guy thing, uh, just press the boom arm button there, the flashing button. And again, you, make you need to make sure to do these first time. If you end up missing one, you'll have to reload the game and try again. Because you have to grab all ten of these things without making a mistake. So again, if you do end up missing it the first time, exit out and uh, just try again. But always make a manual save before each one. I just found it easier to do that one. So what we can do now is press up on the green arrow. And then right to obviously go to the left. And again, if you want to make a manual save here, be my guest, it's always worth doing. But if you feel confident enough, just make sure to grab him first time. As you can see, I didn't. I somehow bollocks it up on the second one. So, <laughs> hey, that's just fantastic of me, isn't it? <laughs> it's about as fantastic as a slap in the balls. Right, so that's the first two. We do have to come back to these later on. Um, and again, they do get a little bit more progressively difficult, but let's wait till later. So go to the left for now. Uh, back into the Star Space Weaver's room. We've got another space chart to give him. So give the space chart to the Space Weaver, or the Star Chart to the Space Weaver. It's all the same crap, isn't it? And, yep, again, we can just pr uh, we can exit the cutscene. Again, during the speed run, that's all we'll be doing is skipping cutscenes and skipping dialogue. So, <laughs> that'll be fun and very nice. <laughs> Fucking speed run achievements. Sickening. So, we're going to go back to the right. And again, what we're going to do uh, is basically the exact same as before. So, we're going to speak to Marek. Who is a wolf fox thing for some reason. So, again, if you want to make a manual save again before each one. Honestly, it's probably worth doing if you're not feeling that confident. Um, so, yeah. But again, this time, it's starting to get a little bit quicker, but not too bad. These cute little things. So, again, um, go to the left this time. And then we're going to go up one. There we go. And again, use the boom arm when you're confident enough. Apparently, I bollocks this one up as well, somehow. Yeah, I'm not very good at video games. And, so, and so, Well, the power of editing that. So, go up twice. <laughs> go up twice now. The power of editing makes me not look that crap. And again, just make sure to grab him first time. Again, if you... I know I've said it a couple of times, but again, if you do end up missing one as we go up and then to the right a couple of times. If you do end up missing one the first time, reload your save because now, of course, they're starting to move. Which is an, always a big pain in the bunder snatch. So as you can see, I've made a lot of manual saves just on this part already. 
Uh, but it's always worth doing, because if you do end up messing it, it's just a bit of a pain to go back into it, isn't it? So, there we go. Just wait until he gets directly under the boom arm, and then BAM! You slap that boy down, and, well, life is good. So, that was the first, I think that was the first five, so we're going to need to come back uh, right now, apparently. So, we're going down once, down twice... And again, just make sure, again, if you want to make a manual save, be my guest, but just be careful. And then as soon as the boom arm's on top, you get that boy done. Oh, he's an angry little right head. Angry little square head. Well, goodbye, square head. Probably. So, shit was about to kick off, but we have unkicked it off, so we've woken up, skipped the cutscene, now we're going to go back into the vent, into Marek's room. Which is kind of weird that uh, a fox or wolf human hybrid thing is living under a little boy's uh, bedroom. A pretty impressive getup though in here. So, walking all the way to the left, we're going to speak to Marek once again, and we're going to choose a couple of uh, specific dialogue options. These ones are literally just to make it go as quick as we can. So first of all, how are we going to get control of the ship's cargo boom arms, which is the first one. And then next, how are we going to take down the shields? Ask the Avengers. Oh, they're pretty good at that stuff. Uh, now we've got the Omicron inhibitor. Now choose the distress call was from Prima Doom or Prima Doom. How do we get there? The second option. Prima. This is the typical Primark or Primark. What do you say? Now um, we can choose. I'd better get back to the mission. Pre-mark or pre-mark? It's pre-mark, isn't it? It is pre-mark. So, before moving on, we're going to open our inventory and use the spoon on the Omicron inhibitor, which is like the headphone-looking things. So that should be your fourth one. So use the spoon on your headphone Omicron inhibitors, and we should be good to just move on to the left now. So we had the inhibitor. We also should have a new star chart of Marble Beck. So, to begin our wishing... Wishing? Wish and mission, we're going through to the door, to the door on the left to get into the control room. Where we're going to watch just another little cutscene here, which again, we're going to skip, but feel free to have a watch to see what our hot mama has to say. And she's a hot mama because she's the sun, that's nothing, nothing to do with anything weird, okay? Right, go through the green door, which is on the left hand side. So there's two doors there, one's green, one's blue-ish. So we're going to go through the left hand one, which is to the teleporter room. Uh, or the, and now we're going into the very left-hand side. There's always going to be three teleporters. We are going to the trophy room, which is on the left-hand side here immediately. Teleport. Like, oh, just imagine that, man. People in space have got it pretty good. I mean, if they're this advanced, like the Jetsons and stuff. Like, teleporters and... Oh, just, oh it's making a lazy man's dream come true. <laughs> and his head got smaller. Okay, maybe not. Tap in. Right, we're going to use grabbing Gary on any of the objects... In the trophy room, you'll get the same dialogue. So use the grabbing gallery on absolutely anything. That'll be number 16. Pick up the big fat baby suit with the weird square diamond helmet. Uh, so we've got the hazard radiation suit and the helmet will be added as a separate item. So now we're going to the right through the vent on the right hand side. And now we're going to use our grabbing Gary's bow. Grabbing Gary, use it on the creature containment door. Which is the only door in the bedroom. So that would have gone well. So that should now be 17. And now what we can do is just cross the room to the right. And exit the right door into Marek's hub again. Wow, lots of, uh, lots of creepy stuff going on. Like sneaking about in a weird fox's bedroom. Right, we're going to basically go back into Shay's room now. So ignore the weird non sea fox thing. And <laughs> go to, through back to the vent into Shay's room. And now we're going to see the rest of our ship. So we're going to walk to the right, go through the happy smiley face door. And we're going to uh, basically uh, enter. This is the called the left corridor. So walk to the right a bit. And now we're going to walk into the kitchen, which has the spoon on it. So the two doors here, the one on the right, which has the happy little spoon on it. We're going to enter through there. And at the bottom of the screen, we're going to pick up the knife, which is directly at the bottom of the screen. Did I just mention it was at the bottom of the screen? I think I did. So at the bottom of the screen, pick up the knife. Oh, a knife. A knife likes to fork a spoon, but a spoon doesn't like to fork the knife. 
Apparently, that's what I heard of uh, reliable sources. So we're going to open our inventory, use the grab and carry on the knife. So that should be number 18. And here's why spoons and knives don't like to fork each other. Uh, use the spoon on the knife. And apparently they don't work well together. But if you're a good fork, you can fork anything and anyone and get away with it. I'm still on about cutlery, by the way. Forks are just the best, right? <laughs> Red. So we're going back through the door uh, with... with in which we came in to go back to the left corridor. We go into the right hand side. No, that's the left. We'll try that one again. Durr. Okay, got a bit got a bit derpy for a minute there. Walking to the right, so I ended up walking to the left. Okay. So through the door, and now we're going uh, basically to the right hand side of the screen. And we are now now going through the blue door, which is on the right, to get to the right corridor. So yeah, some of these are a bit confusing, but you know, it's all good. So, go to the right-hand side door out of these two. Now we're going to end up in the right corridor. I suppose it's a right corridor because it's on the right-hand side. It makes perfect sense. So now we're going through this door here immediately with the ice cream on it. Who the hell doesn't want a, a big ice cream room? Jesus Christ, that is just a fit-ass mother of God. Oh, man. This is just a dream. So what we're going to do is use the spoon... On the whipped cream gun, which is literally just to the right there of the two ball bag creatures. One with a... <laughs> looks like a dildo sticking out of him, which is funny. Hey, not bad. Um, right, so, again, use the spoon on the whipped cream gun there. That is number six. Now we can pick up the whipped cream gun. So I have to do the spoon before picking up the whipped cream gun. Now we're going to open our inventory and use our grabbing Gary on the whipped cream gun. Which will be number 19. Huh, yeah, you think? And now we can uh, use the Grab and Gary again and use it on the ice cream dump track, which is at the top. Right there. Now, you might or you might not unlock the achievement. I didn't unlock the achievement here, but that should be number 20. So you should have the achievement for Gary has his reasons. But again, as you can see, I don't just yet. So don't panic if it hasn't unlocked. In a We've got to grab a couple more items anyway. So I will show you exactly where and how and what to do. So, from there, we can now just go back through the door, same door that we come in, and go through to the right corridor. And then, when we get outside, what we're going to do is go to the right, the right, and we're going to go through the door with the smiley face on it, the big double doors, the one with the butter's quiff at the top, there we go. So, what we're going to do, we're going to talk to the knitted creature, the old, uh, <laughs> the old knobhead ball bag. I say that because he's literally got a knob sticking out of his head. And it kind of does look like a comfy ball bag. Not the... I mean, you know, the ones you sleep in. I I'm not making this any better for myself here, am I? So now choose, hey, maybe I can fix your back. Have s Inject some steroids, some stem cells. Do all that crap. Let's see how that goes. Right, now choose, well, I gotta go. And again, if you've missed any of the grabbing Gary opportunities... Um, here's some more. So, use Grab and Gary on the crochet hook that we just pulled out. Yeah, if you're being stabbed in the back, probably is going to make your back twinge just a tick. So now we can exit out of here, and we're going to go through the door on the right. So the small, singular door. And we're going to enter the hallway. And again, we're going to do another Grab and Gary thing right here. So we're going to use Grab and Gary out of your inventory and use it on the trash chute. Or just the bin. I don't know why Americans are going to overcomplicate things with trash shoot. Uh, just call it a bin. There we go. Job done. Uh, so that that would be 22 out of 20. So we will get there. Now for some reason it does unlock. I use Grab and Gary on this warning airlock uh, sign. Airlock ahead. So I use Grab and Gary here. And for some reason the achievement for me unlocks now. Uh, but don't worry. There are plenty of opportunities to grab another couple if you don't grab it here. In fact, one of them is going to be outside with the control hatch. So, but again, for me, thankfully, it did unlock here, which is a couple of achievements are like that in this game. So, now we are going to the back there, into the airlock. We're going to get another cutscene and we're going to put our, <laughs> you know, our 1950s clown suit back on. But open up the inventory. Now, we need to use the fart jar on the tank of compressed ass air. So we're gonna, gonna put that right right in our head so we can end up spewing like Steve-O in that one jackass film. Um, use the whipped cream gun. And that is gonna give us 
I mean, I don't know what it's supposed to give us. And use the knife as well. Um, <laughs> oops, I accidentally used the spoon on the knife there. What I meant to do was use the knife. And there we go. So we've got, we've got a, a literal bag of fat on our face. Just in case there's any aliens, we got a whipped cream gun to kill them for some reason. Now what we can do, what you have to do then is you can ho either hold the A button or you can press the A button. Now if you rapidly press the A button, I find it does give you a little bit better control. But what we need to do is go over this spiky boy right here. Not go directly smashing into it like I just did. Um, go over the sort of space antenna thing. And then just immediately go, just go to your immediate left then. So when we finally get over without ripping our 50s clown suit, don't go down because there's nothing there. <laughs> As you can probably see, uh, you needed to go just immediately left and that, is, that will get us over to the control hatch. So here's another grabbing Gary opportunity, but we're going to use the spoon on the control hatch first. So whip open your inventorious once more. Uh, go On your D-pad, go over to your spoon and then press the A button on it, of course. So that's going to be number seven. And the grab and Gary opportunity is you can use the grab and Gary on this control hatch as well. So that's just in case you haven't unlocked the achievement yet, but hopefully you would have by now. Right, so to do this extremely solid bit, use the knife to open the control hatch. <laughs> ah, knives are funny. And then we can use grab and Gary on the control hatch. And his arms will latch on to the boom arm controls. And that is going to get us the armed achievement. Thankfully, we're not Russian. Otherwise, any, anyone that's armed and Russian, it's probably dangerous right now. Um, right, so... Sorry. Sorry, Russia, but, you know. So, once the cutscene's ended, we've got the achievement. We can now jet back to the right. We're going to exit the close-up view of the control hatch. And what we're going to do is jet back around the antenna. So, go up. <laughs> Straight up. Ah! Oh! Surely someone would have watched Lee Evans to have got that joke. I hope so, otherwise I just sounded like another douchebaggery piece of douchebags. Right, now when we're down here, we can just jump straight down. And we can walk backwards on ourselves. Uh, so we're walking through the escape corridor and exiting back into the hallway. And now, what we're going to do, we're going to use the blue teleporter to get to the teleporter room. So go to the left, go up. Go up, straight into the big cave-like hole. Luckily, it's not moist and smelly. Uh, no, straight into the teleporter room then. And then we're going to go into a another room that we haven't been in yet. Eventually. And we're going straight into the middle room this time, which is the orb fusion room. Ooh, important. So from here, go into the <laughs> middle <laughs> room. Teleporter, activate. This way to the fusion orb containment facility. Oh, this is the best part of my day. I think that's all my... And now we just look like one of those hilarious roid heads who's got a massive body but a tiny head. Or the opposite Mr. Mackie from South Park. <laughs> okay, okay. So, <laughs> walking through the left. Okay. We're now going to trigger the cutscene. Now we're going to use the helmet on Shay. Luckily, we've got the opposite Mr. Mackie head small enough to use the helmet. So, go into your inventory, click on the diamond-shaped thing. Next to the babe, fat baby suit. We don't need to wear the fat baby suit. It's just the helmet we're after. So, <laughs> what a head. What a head. And then what we're going to do, go to the bottom of the screen and just move the cursor down to the bottom of the screen until a down arrow appears. Now, when you see the double arrows, by the way, that means you can press the A button again to immediately skip to the room. Which, again, we'll be doing for the speedrun achievement. Um, I edited out because I've done stupid. Um, but use the Omicron inhibitors, again, which are the headphone things, on the fusion orb. You may have to do that twice to get this cutscene to appear, by the way. So if it doesn't work the first time, it'll work the second time. So when we've left the Dr. Beats, uh, Dre by Beats, Beats by Dre, that was what I was after. On the fusion orb, we can now go all the way back out to the right. That should also get us the inhibited achievement as well. Inhibited. Teleporter activated. No malfunction. No malfunction. No malfunction. Ow! 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 Oh! Head normalization expedite. 
So when we finally have our normal head size back, um, I accidentally clicked the teleporter here, but we're not actually going through this teleporter. We're going all the way to the left of the side of the screen. Uh, so now we thankfully don't have an opposite Mr. Mackey head okay. anymore. Oh, that's dumb, okay. Mm, drags on my head, okay. Yes, I know, I know. My impressions are on point. Right, so when we get here, we're going to go to the sort of middle of the screen and go through the red door, which is underneath this big control panel right here. Uh, so nip through there, and we're basically going back to the space we at uh, the space weaver's room. We should now have another blueprint, another star chart. So give the space weaver the star chart, and this time he's going to refuse to take the ship to Primark because apparently all the chavs are there on the Saturday, and I just can't be asked waiting in all those frigging queues. So choose fine, cozy cluster it is. By the way, for anyone who doesn't know, Primark is this awesome British shop which has loads of stuff, really cheap, which rip after about two days, um, and literally it's just full of chavs there, so yeah, I enjoy it. So what we're going to do is go down and then climb down the ladder. We're going to use the crochet hook now on the Star Tapestry. Now, we're going to press a, the A button on the top left, the um, sort of third one over on the second row, and the bottom left one. So that is exactly what that should look like right now. And then just press the uh, B button to get on out of here. Basically, what we've done is we are going to pre-mark, mate. I need me some three-pound shoes, which rip in a week. Uh, <laughs> but what we'll also do is unlock the doomed achievement. What's that? I see... Okay then, so it turns out we killed the Space Weaver, it turns out he couldn't hack it in pre-mark Doom. A lot of people can't, so don't panic yourself. Right, remember the boom arm grabbing crane game thing we done earlier? Well, we're going to be doing the final few now. So that is why we are making a manual save now. You can actually make it when you get to the screen and start again, but these are the trickiest ones because the arm moves faster, so do the little teddy head things. So, going over the right, of course, to Marek, and we are going to do this again, so, but for some reason, if you make a manual save on this screen, um, you never go back, so even if you get, uh, do 8-9, the 8th and 9th one, but you mess up on the 10th, you actually have to start from the 8th one again, so, just be aware, so, now make a manual save, and then just do it again. So, you see how fast it's moving now? Now, for me, there's a point on the right-hand side, the... They normally, after just a couple of attempts, they normally go to the right-hand side together, the arm and the teddy thing. So, that is the biggest advice I can give for this, as we just go up twice. So, again, you might not get it every time, but just keep watching and waiting until they both go to the right-hand side, and then, bam. And you'll sort of get a feel for it. You'll get, uh, you will notice and get a feel for it as it starts going to the left-hand side. So, from here, we go into the right Again, if you miss one or mess up on the first attempt, don't grab them first time. And then just go down one here. Again, just reload your save. Now, be careful. Again, just wait until they both go to the right now. And there it is. So, that for me is the biggest way in how this worked. Um, looks like a big sun is about to poke him in square into eyeballs. So... Like I said, if you've managed to rescue all ten creatures on our first attempt without messing up, we get the Flawless Execution. Bam! Not even 1%! Come on! That means you are the best gamer on planet Earth. Okay? Even if you haven't done, you know, the Gears, uh, serious Gears achievements, you are the best gamer on this planet. If you've got rare achievements, that are not even 1%. So, that's the end of Shay's chapter. Now we are looking at Vela. So, again, press B to skip the cutscene, walk to the left, and then talk to your already annoying sister. I know it's just, I know it's love, but, mate, too much love for one day, okay? I, I don't do love. I hate love, and love hates me. Why has everyone got a big, weird, long nose in this game? I'm not sure. Anyway, after talking to your sister, go through to the house, the only house that was there. And we're going to be getting a, another missable achievement. So, go to the right, slightly, and then... Oh, well, thanks. You invited none of my friends. <laughs> awesome. Right, so... What we need to do now is find the ceremonial knife. So grab the towel, which is the, which is at the forefront of their screen. There we go. Does it look like the knife's under that towel, really, Vela? Come in. Dad, don't be a dick, mate. Come on. 
So, pick up the cupcake. This cupcake will come in handy. Uh, which is underneath the towel. Next, we're going to talk to Granny. Granny Mexico. Baguette hat. Why have you got baguettes on your hat? And that hat looks like a steak. Anyway, so we need to talk to the grandma, um, who is called Levina, by the way. Uh, for some reason, I end up talking to my sister first. You don't need to do this. We just need to talk to the grandma. And again, that's one thing that this game doesn't do, is highlight who or what anything is in the game. So sometimes, like the Omicron inhibitor, it was a pair of Beats by Dre headphones. Anyway, when we speak to Levina, choose any idea where Mom's knife is. Can I ask you about the Maiden's Feast? How many of these feasts have you organised? What is Mog Chothra? What is Mog Chothra? The latest in our... Yep, okay. Where do creatures like Mog Chothra come from? The top option. I want to go beyond the Plague Dam someday. Well, don't we all, Hon? I want to go beyond the Plague Dam someday. How much do we know about these grand mogs? How much do we know about these grand mogs? Why was I chosen? Why was I chosen? In every town visit Okay, thanks, Granny. Much appreciated, Baguette Head. Uh, Mog Chothra attacks other towns. Mog Chothra attacks other towns. Okay, I think I know all I need to know. So, why don't we just fight Mog Chothra, which is always a good idea, right? You got your balls right up against your throat there. And my grandpa doesn't look too happy about this feast. And by the way, her, her lady bowels, of course. I have no idea what a lady has down there. Probably some lady bowels. So, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Granny. Now go ahead and talk to your pirate-looking grandpa on the right-hand side. With a pretty epic beard, though. I'll give him that. Do you know where Mom's knife is? Mom? Mom? Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about this Maiden Feast either. So, top option. I'm not sure how I feel about this maiden's... Why do you hate the Maiden's Feast, Grandpa? What? Is it because you're old and you can't get some anymore? Uh, yes. Why do we stop being warriors? So, top option again. Why do we stop being warriors? And then choose, hey Gramps, want a cupcake? You're looking like you're about a kilo over there, pal. So, now that one is done, we should now get the question, uh, the achievement called Question Your Elders. Eventually. Eventually. And this is the problem with this um, game again. This is why I'm just standing around for a sec. Um, sometimes it does take a while for the achievements to unlock. There we go. So it di it does take a while to unlock. So just keep keep trying until... Or, or keep waiting until it unlocks and then we can move on. So give the grandpa the cupcake to the grandpa. And then say, for you, grandpa. Or split it with you. No, sorry. Say, split it with you. Bottom option. Split it with you. Sorry, my bad. Nothing's just for you. I want to cut two. He slices that boy in half, throws his knife on, and that is exactly what we're going to pick up. So it was Grandpa Bell Ender, which uh, that's his actual name. No, it's Beast Ender. But he threw the knife. We give it. We pick up the knife, and then we're going to give it to Moam to trigger yet another cutscene. All right, time to serve this girl up. But first, can I ask just one more time? Honey, why don't we just kill Mog Chothra? <laughs> <laughs> Majestic to behold. So, now we're in some... This isn't exactly the Maiden's Feast that I planned of, but uh, there we go. So, click on the left girl, which says Delish. Which, uh, I mean, I assume Mog Chothra can't really read English, but there we go. You could do. So, we're going to speak to her, and then after the cutscene... We're going to speak to the girl in the yellow dress, the one with the chicken drumstick, one that says fun size on it there. Up for grabs, it's kind of funny though. Now choose, just wanted to say good luck. Bye! 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 Bye. Bye. Now we're going to choose to talk to the girl in the purple drink me dress, the one to the right of us. Man, we are looking like some kind of Beauty and the Beast characters here. Now just say choose, well, good luck. Now just say choose. I meant to say, choose well, good luck. Now, talk to the girl in the right, on the in the red hot stuff dress. I bet she's happy with that one. Hot stuff coming through. We work hard, we play hard. Hot stuff coming through. Simpsons quote again, never mind. Right, we now have to escape from the feast, so with the talk to the girl in the purple drink me dress and choose, hey, can I have a drink of that water? So the third option down. Water. 
And then, what she's going to do, uh, we're going to get the corset. Now we're going to talk to her again and choose the can I borrow that bottle one more time option. So, talk to her again. Can I borrow that bottle one more time? I want a glass yarl with it. Why do people say yarl after everything? I, I don't know why yarl is a yarl yarl. Right, anyway, so she gets eaten, which is unlucky. So we're going to give the water to the girl in the fun size yellow dress. Y'all. <laughs> she, she all wet now. Meh, meh. Well, might as well prank someone before we die. So we're just going to um, slap through the cutscene. If you want or if you want to watch it, up to you. Now we're going to give her the towel. There we go. Perfect. And then, when the bird reappears after this cutscene, we are going to use the corset on it. Oh, tidy. Well, thanks for that. Now my chicken drumsticks covered in cake, you butthole. Right, use the corset on the bird. And then we're going to use the knife on Vela's dress, and then we can, we cut ourselves free. Honey, we ain't up for grabs this time. Up yours, buddy. Let's, let's go. Uh, let's go. Crazy brat. You've just sacrificed us to the devil, you big baguette head wearing Mexican French looking cheese monkey. I, I don't know what the hell that was either. So, we get a new cutscene, we get a new achievement, and we also end up in a brand new place. High above the clouds, so it's kind of like heaven except with Sesame Street style birds or something. Right, okay, so what we need to do, click to the bottom of the screen to move forward. The camera will pan out, as you can see. And if you stand in the clouds for too long, as you can see, you will fall through and this cutscene will happen every time. So, just try and walk on the wood. Which always helps, of course. So, we're just going to go down the ladder, which was at the forefront of the screen again. So, head down there. And now we're in the central area of Merriloft. Uh, no, we're into the feast area. So we're going to talk to Twyla, who is the only girl sitting on the swing. And now choose, did you see, uh, I really like your outfit. Sorry, got a bit ahead of myself there. So I really like your outfit. And then choose, did you say something about shoes? Because if there's two girls together, tight outfits and shoes are probably going to come up in conversation at some point. Or either one or the other. So now choose, well, I leave you alone. Because we've now got a pair of cloud shoes. Which basically means we're not going to sink through the clouds, which is incredible. So, um, open up your inventory, put the cloud shoes on Vela. Because eventually, I mean, yeah, you, you're literally walking on like wood and stuff. So your feet are just going to be full of splinters, which probably hurts worse than Lego, I assume, eventually. So, going back up the ladder. Now, we are going to go to the right. So, what I do is just go to the central area. And then, at the very right-hand side, that is where we are going. Eventually, but I actually end up talking to this lady first um, So I do talk to her and basically a little cutscene is going to play out where she needs a knife Because <laughs> well, we ruined that one so uh, But we could have just come back to her later. I just done this by accident in all fairness So we'll let her get back to work uh, But the next time we talk to her we should have the knife and she doesn't hate us happy day So go to the very very right just past Sesame Street Birdhead. Uh, I forget the names, to be honest. Uh, I, I don't know what I'm doing, being a bit of a fanny walking on the clouds. <laughs> Please, just carry on. There we go. Right, welcome to the nesting ground. So we're going to talk to McGee, who is the girl on the right who is sweeping a bird's nest. This little bird head thing. Hello, McGee. Now choose, what are you doing exactly? What are you doing exactly? Now choose, how do you get to the eggs in the high nests? And then after, choose, hey, can I borrow your ladder? And McGee, McGee, we'll give her the ladder, which is nice of us. So we can press B now to back out of the conversation. There we go. Now what we're going to do is walk past McGee. So again, get onto the sort of, you've got cloud shoes on, so you should be golden as nuggets. But then go into your inventory, um, use the ladder on the big cloud bit, and we can now grab the knife that is sitting in the nest. Not sure why there's a knife in the, vest, mate, uh, in the nest. Maybe there's some, you know, illegal genital mutilation so nobody can have kids again. What are they called? It's not called genital mutilation, is it? Where you snip your nuts and you can't have babies anymore. Uh, vasectomy. Illegal bird vasectomies may be going on. Not, uh, 
not genital mutilation. That sounds a lot worse than probably what it is. So going back to the left here, back into the central area, we're going to head over to the Cloud Shoes platform, which is the top one again. And again, we're going to talk to Kroll, or Carol. Now, um, if you didn't see her earlier on, now you'll get the cutscene, but you'll get the same conversation. Now choose, um, well, I get back to work, because, for so sorry, for some reason I'm balls in this bit up. All we need to do is give the knife to Kroll. Oh, Kroll. C-Roll. There we go. Happy day. So she's, she now gives us a pair of large cloud shoes. So we're going to walk down the steps and out along the path back to the nesting grounds on the right-hand side. Now what we're going to do is move the cursor to the large floating cloud in the background. Um, so as soon as you see a up arrow, there you go. Again, you can press double A where you see the two arrows together just to get there a little bit quicker. So now we're here, we're going to see a gold egg that sits in a nest basically in front of us. So we need to um, open up our inventory and we need to use the large cloud shoes on the ladder because our ladder is too small at the minute. And the large cloud shoes, I don't know how you're thinking you're going to get up there with just some shoes. So... There we go, use the large cloud shoes on the ladder, and then we need to use the ladder on that nest. See, it's simples. You don't need me to explain. You're all smart people. You're also, you're all hot and fit and beautiful and smart. And that's the way I like it, baby. So, once we have scared away the bird, we're going to pick up the golden egg during that cutscene, and now we can climb down the ladder. The ladder, mate, I'm very sorry, my English is... Well, it's about as good as foreign people speaking English today, who can't actually speak English. I'm about that point. Can't do it. So, go back, and now we're going to go to the left again. So, all the way to the left. And then this time, we're going to walk over and use the ladder on Jesse's nest. Now, Jesse is the big bird at the opposite side of the screen. So, if we walk to the left, and then just up to where, just up. From where the central bit is where we are now. You can see the big giant angry looking bird. And um, that is Jesse by the way. So Sesame Street bird is angry. So use the ladder with this bit of cloud. And guess what we're going to do with that. We're going to climb up. Well I didn't know ladders were invented for that. I, th I thought they were for just keeping on builders vans. And nothing else happens with them. So go to the left. Um, around the only path there. And we are now basically at a giant fruit tree. Now. Be careful not to fall through the holes in the cloud. Big, glaring, obvious looking cloud. So, walk up a little bit. Then walk to the left over to the next wooded section. And then walk to the back again. Don't go through the central part of the hole. Because you will just... Well, you won't die, but you'll slide down and it'll take about three seconds or so. It's a bit of a minor inconvenience. Interact with this branch. And it's going to pop off a cheeky little peach boy. James and the giant peach. Oh, I suppose this time it's Vela and the Tiny Peach, which doesn't have quite the same ring to it. So, from here, so we should have a peach down, uh, fallen down now. So, click on the tree's trunk. We've fallen through the gap. Now, walk out along the left branch. So, go to the left branch first, and we're going to pick up the peach from the nest. Peachy. <laughs> I know something in there. So that's peachy. And that's after I've done a lot of squats. <laughs> yes, so what we're going to do is eat the peach. So, use the peach on yourself. Take a bite out of that butt peach. Oh, you even eat the, at the seed, which is a bit weird, but it's okay. So, now we are going to walk um, along to the branch on the right. By the way, we've eaten that peach. We're going to get someone else to eat a peach for another achievement later on. The produce distributor achievement. But that's for later on. So, choose you're in big trouble, young man. Even though he looks well older than you. And he's got a leaf beard, which is cool. Why don't you just let go? What are you really doing down here? Why would Jesse's egg need clearing anyway? Or cleaning anyway. Jitsi, my English is a bit just not good. Right, now choose. Now, I think. Now, I choose well, you hang in there, kid. But I think you've actually got to um, basically just exhaust the dialogue with him. And that is what gets us the achievement. Because um, I sort of went left. I was expecting the achievement to unlock. And it didn't end up in unlocking for me. So what I would do is just exhaust all the dialogue options there. Choose the mind if I squeeze past you option. So, and then it should unlock. So I was, again, being a bit of a dong mong. So apologies about that. So now I just smash through the dialogue this time. 
So mind if I just squeeze past you? And then Vela will automatically say, you hang in there. And then eventually, we should get the achievement. Make up for some hygiene demerits. There it is. So again, these achievements, a bit annoying. They do take a while to unlock. But again, all you got to do is exhaust your dialogue with him. And that you should get that achievement. So we're walking back to the tree trunk, entering the hole in w to climb back up the cloud. Kind of like we've uh, had enough of life. So we're just climbing back up our mother to uh, avoid life. Which is weird. Yet, not hilarious. So, walk back to the leftmost branch and shake it again to get another cheeky peachy. Well, you're not very good at this, Vel, are you, to be fair? So, walk back to the right side of the screen and we're going to fall through the hole in the cloud that is at the top of the screen. So, directly to the right of us now. So, this one, just to the right of the tree branch. And she is going to knock Gus right off his perch. Aha, you did. We not did. We got a faithful bird. Because we put a corset on him. Or something. Oh, did we feed him a chicken drumstick? I don't know. So, after the cutscene, we're going to click on the tree's trunk this time to fall through the cloud again. And we're going to walk to the left. And basically, we're just going to pick up the second peach. Damn, that is definitely my butt. What a squatter's... What a peachy butt squatter butt I got. But, of course, nobody ever needs to know that. So, apologies if I have just made you throw up. No problem, it's what I do. So now we're going all the way to the right branch, and this time we can now pick up Jesse's egg because we just knocked off that guy and basically doomed him. So, sorry Gus, my bad pal. So we're going to enter the hole in the tree trunk again, climb back up to the cloud, and then after this bit we're just going to walk all the way to the right, avoiding the cloud holes to go back to the next area, into basically the central of the areas. It's funny, we've never been here and yet we're doing everyone favours again. So get the egg out and use it on Jesse, the big, angry looking roid bird. Heavy. I mean, to be fair, it's heavy because you've probably got arms that are thinner than my absolute little finger. Probably why. But pick up the golden egg anyway. Jesse's happy again. She's got her baby back. We've just picked up the golden egg and now we can climb back down. That'll also get us the mother and child reunion eventually. Eventually. Yeah, it does take a while to unlock. So we're going to go to the left, and we're going to the very left now. Where the big ward boardwalk is that we are going to. So what we're going to do is place a gold egg into any one of the offering baskets. Doesn't matter which one. There's the mother and child reunion finally unlocking. So any basket makes not a lick of difference. Uh, you can speak to the guy here called Fidur. 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 But we're not going to bother. We're just going to climb straight up and speak to Brother Lightbeard. Now that sounds badass. But he looks just as badass as those frogs in the Budweiser advert. So, uh, <laughs> say hi and then just exhaust all the dialogue options here. Smash through all the dialogue options to get to the next bit. Ah, what a thing to Actually, I just want to get off. Hey, are you done with that gold? Why do you have laces and a big... Why are you up here so high? I really, really want to get off this cloud. Do you have any... Everyone would leave? Mariloft would be... I could go kill... Thanks for the help. See you. So, back down the ladder, let's do some more offerings. Should we should now have two golden Gregs, some eggs. Oh, sorry for the... We just accidentally knocked you out. Unlucky. Right, so pick up the golden egg on the right, and then we're going to place the two eggs in the baskets. Of course, it doesn't matter which one, because they are both golden eggs. And after this one, what we're going to do is climb up the ladder to basically go crashing out of Merry Loft. So that'll get us the achievement called Something Not Light About Her, and we're going to end up in some random guy's house. Which is, of course, not creepy at all. And I mean, by creepy, Curtis doesn't actually do anything here. He's like, oh, some random girl in my house. Yeah, men, you don't get it that easily and that lucky. So, pick up the stained glass from the stained glass window. It's like a diamond shape right there, the golden diamond shape. And we're going to walk down the stairs and we're going to take the axe from the wall, which is by the door on the right-hand side. 
Uh, so there it is. So just on the right hand side there. Ki kind of easy to miss, but we do need that one. Again, not questioning why we've just appeared out of his bedroom for some reason. Uh, have a look at the art piece wall on the wall on the left hand side. There we go. So now we got to speak to the scared looking whiskey nosed lumberer. Now choose. What's the matter with you? Uh, what's the matter you, eh? You look like a bad, pathetic Mario. Uh, don't we all need wood? It's called Viagra. Choose hate about this art at the bottom. <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. Now choose, uh, what is it? I um, And can I have it? Makes no difference, you can pick anyone there. And then choose, I like how it matches your decor. And then, <laughs> decor, yes, that's what I said. Now choose, catch you later, Kurt Wass. Now we can take the art off the wall. So, again, make sure to do it because we have to place it in a thing. And then, if you don't do it, it literally takes about a minute to come back and get it. But it's a minute that we haven't got. Especially with the <laughs> World War Three imp impending, apparently. So, make sure to give the peach to Curtis. And that is going to unlock the produce distributor achievement for feeding two people, two different people, a healthy snack. So, remember we fed ourselves earlier, we fed Curtis, and now we can go back upstairs and exit through the door on the left. So, we're going to climb back to Merryloft. Again, Curtis not questioning why there is a huge ladder that goes directly into his house. Who knows? Right, so this time we're going to head, basically what we need to do is go um, down. Not down the ladder, but sort of to the right and down. Because we are going to head back to the giant fruit tree. So when we get out of here, eventually... No, I can't hear him, sorry. Uh, go back to the central bit and up. And then just climb. Again, we need to use the ladder where Jesse is taking a cheeky kip now. And then back to the left-hand side to the old James and the Vela and the small fruit peach tree. So simply walk back to the left, again trying to avoid all the holes, you don't want to fall into the deep hole trap, and remember not to stand in the clouds for too long because we don't have our shoes. So interact with the branch again, that's going to fall down, so immediately just go uh, click the middle tree trunk, once I'm out, and we're going to slide down, and again we're going to grab the peach from the nest on the left branch. Man, too many peaches happening here today, but it all comes in for a good cause. Of course, you wouldn't know to do this in real life. Uh, you'd sort of... We'd just get offended and cry about everything instead of trying to do something. Now, we're going to go back up. And basically, what we need to do... We need to just ba uh, travel back all the way through Merryloft to Curtis's house again. So, remember that is... When we exit to the right, go down into the central area. Go left, and then down the big ladder where Fedor is. And we'll end up back in Courtois's house. Okay, so since we've made it, remember to pick up the uh, stained glass from the um, stained glass bloody the little diamond thing if you haven't already got it, and make sure to pick up the axe, uh, just in case you didn't get that yet, so make sure you've got those items, and then we can go out. So, all we need to do is basically keep clicking the bottom of the screen, uh, Vela's going to do a little run, hop, skip and step, or oh, she's going to take a sweet ass time, come on, so just keep clicking and then... Eventually, Vela will come into the forefront. There we go. So what we're going to do is actually walk to the left first. So there's only one thing here, and that is a big, chunky boy snake. So we need to inspect the horn. A snake's going to jump out on us, try and kill us, basically. And all we need to do is nothing now. So just let the snake squeeze Vela until she blacks out. Oh, guarantee this will be a new TikTok trend. This is so funny. <laughs> 
because that's what tick that's what basically ninety percent of TikTok is doing moronic trends until they hurt themselves, like that stupid gorilla glue head woman. Die. Vella? So for someone who was scared to go out of his house, then he, he done us quite a big favour there. So cheers for that, mate. That will give you the not good with directions achievement eventually. No, oh, there it is. Oh, nice. Only 2% of people unlocked this. Bang, tidy, mate. Right, so we're going to go back out and we're going to go back to the forefront of the screen once more. This time, of course, we don't need to head left since there's only a TikTok trend wiener snake there. We're just going to keep on going to the right. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to go to the right. Now, there is a talking tree in this part of the woods, but we're going to skip this bra. And we're just going to keep walking to the right. So ignore the talking tree or the tree that is apparently being burgled and has got some tape on him. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll come back to him in just a touch. So, welcome to Shell Mound. It's a sandy place with a bunch of crabs and stuff in it. Again, there's a lot of crabs. So if you, if you do have crabs, go and see a doctor. Um, right, now cross the bridge, <laughs> head to the right, and we're going to talk to the mayor. Which is, of course, the sort of only guy there with a bunch of fish heads singing. So, speak to the guy, <clears throat> who is the mayor. Right, now we need a bucket. So, we need his hat. So, choose because you look like a mayor. Then say, hey, about your bucket hat. Is it KFC? Because I don't mind my head smelling like KFC. For a price. And then compliment him with, it looks great on you. Very fancy. Which, of course, he, the mayor doesn't want to look fancy. And basically, he's going to give us his bucket. So that comes in beast handy. Now we can end the conversation. Just choose better let you get back to the fiast. The fiast. Oh, how fiast. Now we need to find something that will basically, we need to stop the sandcastles being masked up by the waves. So on the left hand side, pick up the driftwood, uh, driftwood from the beach right there. And now we can just leave Shell Mound and go all the way to the left, all the way to Curtis's house. Yes, we're starting to get into a point where walking is happening annoyingly a lot. So, when we are here then, give the driftwood to Curtis. And also, like I said, I've started pressing the A button twice to get to, you know, houses and places a little faster. In case you're wondering if it's an edit or a skip or anything, it's me just pressing the A button twice just to get just to get there a little faster. So, I do apologise if this guide is going a little bit fast for you and you've had to pause it a couple of times. I've tried pacing it as well as I can, but anyway... So he'll be impressed. We get a stool out of the wood, which we now have, so we can exit the house and go back through the woods. When we get here, we're going to talk to the talking tree, so go right and talk to the talking tree. I don't know why anyone hasn't thought that this is a brilliant billion money-making idea. It's a talking tree, for Christ's sake. So we're going to use the axe on the talking tree. What we're going to do eventually, so use the axe, which is the axe-looking axe, and use that on the talking tree. Uh, we don't need to talk to the guy at this point, or the tree guy, so just press B to back out. Let's make him uh, throw up, is it? Yeah, because that's what you always want to do to inanimate objects, so hang the bucket off the end of his nose. Or I hope that's his nose, at least. Uh, <laughs> and then what we're going to do is show the stool to the tree. No, I wouldn't keep you as a Christmas tree, sorry pal, don't flatter yourself. So show the stool to the tree, and what he's going to do, he is literally going to... Spew, I assume, tree sap. Or it could be just be tree spew. But he's going to do it into the stool, into the bucket. So now that gives us the bucket with tree sick in it. Lovely. Hopefully it doesn't smell as like human sick does. But anyway, um, we got the bucket of sap. We can now go to the right back to Shell Mount here. So now we're going to give the bucket of sap to the mayor. Which is what's needed for the building of the sandcastles, etc, etc. So, give the mayor the bucket of sap. And now, 
we can basically get into the Maiden's Feast. But we've got a couple of things more to do. I'm not even taking the piss out of bald people anymore, because that's me soon. As long as I can grow more than just a ginger pubic beard, I'll be happy then. So, we're going to walk to the right. Um, we are going to go past the Maidens. <laughs> they will be singing at some point, and it is fantastically bad. It is X-Factor style worthy. But that's never been any good. So, we're going to walk up the steps, and we're going to talk to the Dead Eye God's bodyguards. Sighted stranger, <laughs> thank you very much. Right, choose, hey, can I get you guys something? Mirror, TV, perhaps a cold drink. And choose some more holy tea of gas, which I didn't expect. I'd have gone for a nice refreshing um, alcoholic beverage. A bit of Jack Daniel's honey and a bit of uh, lemonade, that goes well. Right, now choose, can I go inside? <laughs> yes, I do. Because you guys are gardening it, so it must be cute. So you really got to, you know, kiss ass here. You've got to get down on all fours and really lick pubes up. After that, we need to just solve a riddle so we can press the B to back out of the conversation. I could entail you and regale you with what uh, it, it, it we have to do, but we're just going to show them the peach and that basically, that's the riddle done. So I could explain it, but we're just going to show them the peach and now we can get into the cave. So, go into the cave now. We don't need to speak to the dead fisheye bodyguards anymore. Darshi blows. Right, so this is where we needed to pick up the art piece earlier on. So, if you uh, forgot to pick it up from Curtis's house on his fireplace, just go back and grab that one now. Otherwise, we can just grab the art piece, put it on the um, pedestal on the right-hand side. And some weird guy's going to appear. And he's not that weird. He, his name is Alex, and he's just trying to... I don't know, he's just trying to do something. I don't know what he's doing. Anyway, we can just press B again to back out of the conversation. Now, look at the... Well, it's called the amplifying quartz. Multicoloured. The thing behind us, basically in the middle of the room. Alex, that is a hell of a headline, man. Um, so, what you need to do... She basically breaks that one, so... Congratulations, Vela. You are just... You're dumb, man. You're dumb. Right, pick out the top diamond anyway, the laser, that one is called, the red laser, the laser coil. So pick that one. Now what you need to do is put the laser coil back in the bottom side. Yeah, bottom side. And then what we need to do is grab the stained glass, what we got from earlier on, and put that in the top. And then what we've accidentally but fantastically created, we've just done a death ray, so... I mean, for someone who's so dopey, you have the smarts of an absolute smart pig. So, after this cutscene, Alex will now give us the detonator for the death ray, and we're going to just walk back down the steps. So now we're going to fill the tear gas gun using Plankton's Chum. So the gun, which is the sort of fish gun. Oh, there's the singing. <laughs> yeah, that went... Uh... Well, that makes my sperm count just go back inside itself. So, don't use the gun on the perfume, because that's stupid and that doesn't work. So, if I could stop doing that, that'd be great. You need to walk to the bottom of the screen, eventually. And there we go. So, we can see Plankton with his chum trying to steal Mr. Krabs' formula. But what we're going to do is use the tear gas gun on the chum. Me old chum. This always does come in handy, Vela. I agree. So, we need to spray the maidens with the tear gas gun. Okay? So, pick it up. It should have a plankton's chum in it. Spray them. You know, they're going, oh no, who did that? It's literally the only other girl on this island at the minute. Anyway, so, during the birds feeding frenzy, let's grab the perfume bottle to the left of them. Which I tried using the gas gun on for some particular reason. Uh, so, grab the perfume. And skip the cutscene there. And we can talk to the mayor now. Well, we need to spray the uh, perfume on us first. So make sure to use the perfume on us. Probably smells like birds' anal cavities, but... Well, you know, you smell... Uh, br people smell and eat Brussels sprouts, so that should be no difference to those people. Now we can just talk to the mayor, and we need to tell him I need to enter the Maiden's Feast. And then we're basically going to have... I don't know if you can consider it a mini-boss battle or anything, but it is kind of a battle. So, uh, you can manually save it here if you want, um, if you end up messing up. I always do manually save it now and again, just in case. Uh, apparently this is point proven, so this time, 
I mean, I every other couple of scenes, I ended up making a manual save, especially for the speed run. But again, we'll come to that later. So, get your detonator death ray out, press the A button, and then use it on three of his legs. Now, you can't go immediately. You've got to wait till it recharges, I think. But you just need to use it on three of his legs. And then what he's going to do... Uh, Mog Chothra, this is, by the way. The big genital wart of life. He's going to pick us up. Now what we need to do is quickly get your ladder out and use it on his mouth. I mean, she's quite strong, to be fair, to be to chuck a ladder in there. And then um, what we're going to do, when he drops Vela, we're going to use the detonator, aim it at his mouth, and that is how you do that one. So, I mean, it's very, very simple, but... You know, Alex, man, you got a hell of a head. Your head to neck ratio is pretty phenomenal. So that defeats Mog Chothra, but we're going to get a bit of a surprise. So that is the first act of Vela done. Now we've just got one act for each character left, and then a, a big finale, which takes about 10 minutes. So it's not that big. So small things can surprise you in many, many more ways than that one. So how I've got two kids. People are still surprised. Um, right, so we can't skip this cutscene anyway, this is basically the end of Act 1, and this whole thing's gonna happen, and everything's gonna be confused, and gonna be like, Oh my god, what the hell, she? So, when the unfortunate has happened, we are now going to choose Shay again. Again, you could do El uh, Ella, Vela if you want, but we're just going to choose Shay first. Purely because his nose and his hairdo looks more hilarious. That's, that's pretty much the only reason, yeah. That's why I went with it first. So, there's our dad, Orb. So, again, what we're going to do is just pick any of the conversations um, options, and then we're going to watch Shay's dad free himself from the sand. Okay, so, um, don't think, no, it makes no difference, uh, whatever option you choose. So, we get the Please Don't Tell Anyone achievement for completing Act 1. Now what we can do, uh, go into our inventory, uh, press right on the D-pad to our spoon, and use it on Shay's dad. So he turns from an orb to a fully grown, balding, mustachioed legend. And uh, make sure to use the spoon on the destroyed spaceship as well. So that's going to be number 9. I know, I f I, we completely forget about using the spoon and crap on crap. So, anyway, we're going to head left now to leave the crash site. And we end up basically in Shell Mount. So, as it turns out, Mog Chothra was our spaceship. Who designed it to look like a big genital wart? Who knows? I don't know. Anyway, pick up the broken hexipal there on the floor. We... A lot of the random puzzles involve this hexipal, and my god is it a pain in the butt snatch, but hopefully I'll explain it well enough for you that you get it and you can get it first time, as it took me a couple of hours. Yeah. So we're going to use the spoon on the mayor. <laughs> uh, so instead of trying to help the mayor, like 90% of people do, whip out your phone or just take the piss and then walk on. That's what you do. So use the spoon on the mayor, and then go back down, and we're going to use the spoon on Carol. Who is the woman, fish woman, fishing woman there. So that should now be 11 out of 30. Now we're going to use the spoon on the bowl of Plankton's chum. Stop trying to steal the formula, Plankton. Yeah, see, why, how am I not a fantastic voice actor yet? I, I, don't, I don't know, I'm just obviously so talented. And then what we can do is use um, use the spoon in our inventory on the broken hexipal. So you should have got the spoon on the mayor, Carol, the chum, and the hexipal. So which uh, puts us up to 13. Right, go to the right, head up the steps, and we need to visit Alex. And uh, again, we're going to have a little cutscene. Cut and then from here, what we're going to do is just exhaust all of the dialogue options. 
and during the conversation, Alex will give us a hypercam schematic. What the? That outfit. Operation Dandelion. Are you? So why are you dressed like me? You're going back to Laruna. My ship crashed down on the... How are you going to get the... Have you... Where are your parents? Why did they put us on space? Did you have a strange wolf on your ship? Come on. Tell me where you got the... Did your cello have a name? Well, he called himself Merrick. Huh? <gasps> but you know I just made that... Do you need any help getting your ship running? Do I ever? Looters have taken... So, what else does your ship need? Who do you think has been looting? What was it about? What's a... So, what kind of help? Okay, see you later. Okay. For some reason, I honestly thought Alex was just like a future us, but as it turns out, it's nothing like that at all, just in case you were wondering. So, use the spoon on Alex, and we're also going to use it on the charging station. So the charging station, which is to the left of us, make sure to use the spoon on that. And then, so that should be 14 and 15, and then what we're going to do is open our inventory again, and then use the spoon on the schematic, which will be 16. So use the spoon on the schematic. So again, if you, obviously if you haven't noticed by now, just go to the bottom of the screen to get your inventory up, if that's what you want to do. Next, we can head back to the left, out of Alex's, out of Alex's ship, and we're going to go down the steps. Uh, basically, what we're going to do now is just walk to the left through Shell Mound and across the bridge. We're going to walk past the talking tree and we're going to go to the woods outside Curtis's house. So go back to Curtis's house, but don't actually go into Curtis's house. As Shay's dad looks like a diabolical genius there. Lousy, sadistic. <laughs> Oops. Any talking trees over here? So here we are, and I actually, actually, I do accidentally click into Curtis's house. So it, it doesn't make a difference, um, whichever way you do this. You don't miss anything or miss anything extra or anything. Uh, but we just need to choose space here. If you do end up going into Curtis's house, which you probably have if you're following the guide, uh, just choose the space option. What are you making there? What are you making there? Art. Art. Thanks. What are you forging, you miserable bastard? And then choose, what is it? And then from here, we can just press the B button there to back out of the conversation. So, have fun with the metal. We all do. Now what we're going to do is actually just back out and do the original things which we were supposed to do. And then we'll come back to Curtis's house in a bit. So, come back to the forefront. Back to the forefront, that's it, she. You use your skinny legs, boy. Well, <laughs> mine are skinnier, which is embarrassing. And then what we're going to do is go back to the left of the screen, and we're going to be attacked by the snake again. We have to... I don't know if you can interact with the horn and the snake goes away, but we actually have to let the whole cutscene play out. This takes about a minute or two, um, so do not blow the horn. We just need to wait until the snake has exhausted itself, and then we can pick it up. And again, so... Hey guys, welcome to my TikTok. <laughs> I'm doing the trend where the snake almost kills me to death. Etc, <laughs> etc. Et yeah, TikToks. Is your plan to kill me, then eat me? Oh, amazing. Uh, oh, that was a good one. Oh. Well, this has been fun, but... I, I had better be going soon. Okay. Fun time's over, my scaly friend. I... Oh, I hope you're not bending my friend's food. I remember reading on the ship's Cosmomnipedia that snakes hate loud noises. I don't want to have to resort to sonic violence, Mr. Huggy, but it's time to let go now. Well, seriously, you better let go. I'm not kidding around, Mr. Huggy. I think it won't be much longer now. So, the snake finally gave up the ghost, eventually. 
Right. So when he's knacking himself out, we can pick it up, and apparently we're just sticking it in our pocket, which is impressive for the, the fact that Snake is bigger than Alex. Uh, sorry, Shay. Now, then we're going to click on the mailbox that is just outside Curtis's house. So, again, just be careful not to actually go in Curtis's house. It's just an incredible minor inconvenience. Uh, but we do need to um, click on the mailbox, which will give us the flyer out of the mailbox. Now we can open our inventory, and we're going to use the spoon on the snake. So, use the spoon on the snake, and that's going to be 17 out of 30. Right. This time, we, now we do actually need to go back into Curtis's house. The only reason we didn't want to do that first time is just, again, so we could save about 30 seconds. But, you know, we're here now, so we can use the spoon on Curtis. If this is the first time you're in Curtis's house, of course, just choose the options. Space, what are you making, what are you forging, and what is it? But just make sure to use the spoon on Curtis for number 18, and then go uh, up the stairs and to the left of the exit. So now... Somehow, some random guy is just literally finding out a whole bunch of crap. But, we are now coming up to a very random puzzle. So, um, we're going to use the spoon on Fadur. We're apparently going to walk past him first to get a cutscene. Yeah, well done. Cheers, mate. Oh, don't cry, bro. Don't cry, you big trapped pig. So use the spoon on Fadur, and that should be the 19th one. So, now we're going to make a manual save. So the following puzzle must be completed correctly on your first attempt. If you do get it wrong, obviously you can always just reload the save and re-attempt it. That's fine. But what we need to do is there are going to be... Now, this is why I said get your browser open. So go on to either True Achievements or uh, type in Broken Age Random Not Puzzle. So, because we're going to get eight... Um, there's eight different ones that we can get. Fadur is going to show us a knot, and we basically have to pick the correct one when we go and speak to Corol a bit later on. Uh, but there are eight different ones that he can pick, and it's going to be completely random for you every time unless you get lucky. So when we climb on the ladder, um, what we need to do then is speak to Fadur. Again, remember that you must have made a manual save by now, and again... Um, get your browser open and just have a look and have a look at the eight. Um, eight potential ones that you can get. So, there we go. Can you untie the bow on Harmony's Cloud and then choose because it's in the way of us saving him? Now, during this conversation option, we're not going to skip it. We will see a picture of the knot. Now, again, all our knots are going to look different. It's completely random, uh, but there are eight options. So there will be, so for me, it was this particular one. Again, it's going to be different for you. So remember that one or take a picture. It's always worth taking a picture as well on your phone if you want. Um, but for now, we can just choose, hmm, sounds bad. I'd better go and find a knot experience or whatever. So remember the knot that you chose or if you've taken a picture, that one is fine as well because it's always worth doing. But when we get from here, we can now head down. And remember, if you do make a manual save from this point, make sure it's not the one just before we spoke to Fadur to get the uh, random knot. So, for me, that one was like a lazy pole vaulter. And we'll come to that in just a moment. So, for now, what we're going to do is head uh, back out and we're going to get off the ladder and return to Shellmount to go all the way to the right. So, welcome back to Shell Mound once again. Now, what we have to do is talk to Coral, the fisher lady with the longest neck I've ever seen in any human, game or otherwise. Now, what we need to choose then is... You seem good with your hands. <laughs> wink, wink, aren't we all? Uh, so, you, see, you look good with your hands, know anything about knots. Now, you need to choose which of the four replies looks most like your knot. So, for me, it was a lazy pole vaulter. So, again, depending on what your knot was, you'll have a completely different reaction there. So, mine was like a lazy pole vaulter. Remember, you have to get the question and the dialogue options there bang on. If you end up getting it wrong, you'll have to reload your save uh, and go just before for there again. 
and uh, do it again. So make sure you got that one right. As soon as you have got this one right, give the snake to um, Balding Mayor, or completely Bald Mayor. And we're going to do some X. <laughs> and fair play, that's a hell of a snake. That is pure Ekans style stuff. And right, so he's going to cough up the flute. Now we're going to talk to him and we're going to choose Who are you? Who are you? And then choose Do you know anything about electronics? And then choose Do you know how to build a superconductive gyroscopic hypercam? So the bottom one. And then choose, I think sand is the perfect material for making spaceship parts, which is the bottom option again. So, yeah, absolutely smashed it. Right, now what we can do is we can just leave this bit. Now, we gave the schematic to the mayor. So he has now given us the Hypercam sand model, that crown-looking sand-looking model-looking thing. So now we can go back down. Uh, we're going to use the spoon on a couple of things again. Once again, we're going to use it on Shay's square-headed dad. It's a hell of a mustache, mine. I'll give him that. So use the spoon on Shay's papa. And then use it on... Maybe it's Mr. Krabs in disguise. Anyway, use the spoon on the bowl of chum. Yeah, that's uh, that's terrible. Terribly good. I should be a voice actor. So uh, stick the spoon in. And that will be the 21st out of 30, by the way. And then open your inventory and use the spoon on the flute. I don't know why. I don't know why we're doing this, but we are doing it. And it's got to be done. So as soon... Ah, <laughs> that's very funny, Spoon. You must be a comedian with all those hilarious jokes. Um, I tried the Hypercam sand model, but it doesn't actually count towards it. So now we're going to go all the way to the right. And we're going to go up the stairs and talk to Big Al. Uh, and all we need then, we just need to talk to Alex and ask him to borrow a pencil. I mean, we've crash landed, been shot down, but we've come quite unprepared. So, there's Alex then. He's, uh, again, he's got more of a six head than a four head, but there we go. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. So, can I borrow your space pencil? And we will get Alex's pencil. So, choose, okay, okay. see you later. And then we can just return back to Shell Mound to go left. And we're going to give the pencil to Carol. Or Carol. And what she, what she's going to do now, she's going to draw a knot diagram that will help untie the knot. Now, once again, these knot diagrams are going to be completely random for you. So, these three knot diagrams that she will draw, they're going to be like three uh, random knots on a piece of paper. So, when we go back to further, you then have to explain exactly what, um, exactly what each knot looks like. So, we can untie it. And again, remember, we have to do this first time. So again, it's probably worth as we go um, back to the talking tree, uh, just opening up your browser and putting in the random knot puzzle, broken age in Google or whatever, and it should come up with everything there. Because um, of course, I can't tell you which one because I don't know what you've got on your screen, of course. So get the Hypercam sand model out and put it on the resin patch that is on the floor. Um, for some reason, it didn't work for me first time, so I had to show the tree the um, had to treat, show the tree the poster to get him to spew up a little bit more. He's a pretty pathetic tree, really, and he spews at everything. Um, otherwise, you should be able to do it first time, though. So put the Hypercam sand model down, then use the poster again. Which is always hilarious. I mean, come on, she's not that, like, she's not that disgusting. Is there a face in human history that's worth throwing up over when you see it? That's pretty harsh. Pretty harsh, Mr. Tree. Anyway, we can now use the spoon on the tree. Try and get right in there, see what his bloody big deal is. And uh, there we go. So we've done that bit. So now we can head back to the left. And we need to see Big Kurt McGurt, the big Bert of Ernest. I mean, just, just regular Curtis. So go to Curtis's house. Now we're going to give the Hypercam sand mold, or the Hypercam mold, to Curtis. Which in turn, he will now create for us a superconductive gyroscopic Hypercam. And I know that makes me sound smart as fuck. So, I'll take it. Superconductive gyroscopic my hi oh, Bollocks, never mind. Never mind, I screwed that one up. Right, I'm back to being myself and dumb now. So, top left corner, let's get out of here. I almost sounded super smart saying it fast, but, um, you know. 
such is life. So, we're passing through Curtis's house, we're climbing back up the ladder. Now, this is the part again, so it might be worth making a manual save in a different save slot, just in case you've got anything wrong, or you end up um, getting this part wrong, and you have to start again for whatever reason. So, hopefully, you've got the... Um, the uh, not diagram with the three pictures. Hopefully you've got a whole bunch of them popped up. You're not timed on this one. Um, it, like, it, it doesn't go away, so you don't have to take a picture. But, of course, you have to get them right the first time. So, speak to Fadur and then choose, let's give that not another try. Okay. Okay, okay. And Fadur is going to say, right. Okay, so, for me... This one is She Loves Me, She Loves Me Not, which is the first diagram. Again, they're all going to be completely different for you. So make sure you've got it up and just choose the exact same ones that you've got on your screen. Make sure to do it first time. So first one for me is She Loves Me, She Loves Me Not. The second one was uh, Pull Apart the Fighting Snakes. Pull Apart the Fighting Snakes, which was for me. And then the jumper looking kind of one was Unravel the Sweater. So Unravel the Sweater. So basically there's 3, 6, 9, 12. There's 12 potential different bits of knots and diagrams that you can choose from. They're all going to be different. So hopefully, um, I mean hopefully I've explained it enough and you've managed to get through it okay enough and easy enough that you will now get the achievement uh, for clearing up the situation in one attempt, so you should now get the not too difficult achievement, hopefully. Again, if for whatever reason it doesn't unlock or you have made a mistake, just go back and reload your save from, hopefully you've still got it from um, before Fedora shows you the first diagram not, and just go again. But hopefully you should be as golden as nugget balls. Right, so... Um... Yes, yeah, so, of course, so reload your manual say that's fine, because the game doesn't recognise that you've got the puzzle wrong already, so that's fine, so if you want to do that, that's fine. You'll also get the My Lightness achievement for returning the Heavy Duty Spaceship part, which is nice. Okay, once the cutscene's over here, we're going to give the super conductive gyroscopic happy cam to Alex. Oh, I'm back to being incredibly smart. And, um, right, that is another achievement, by the way, Get Hyper, so that's three achievements you should have got there. And now we have to sort out the electronic part of life, the radiation suit of life, and we've got to fix the ship's undercarriage. So we are coming to the end of the second act, so we're going to leave the ship, and we're just going to go across to the bridge, into the woods, and we're going to go back to the Tarkin tree for another missable achievement. Now what I would do right here is make a manual save and I'm going to show you exactly why. So we basically have to uh, tell a joke, a perfect joke to the talking tree, first time without any mistakes. But there is one particular dialogue option where you tell a joke and then you have to speak to the tree again to follow up on that joke. But that dialogue option doesn't appear. So I'll show you exactly what I mean because it did happen to me first time. So make sure you've made another manual save and we need to tell the tree a joke. Uh, but what we have to do first is get the fish down from the tree, so say, don't worry, I've seen much weirder stuff than talking trees where I'm from. I've seen talking boobies. Three boobies and they were all talking to me. That was a, that was a hell of a day. Uh, I understand why you're so mad. I'd want to see three talking boobies as well. Uh, that fish up there in your branches, <laughs> can I have it? I don't know why uh, there are three booby talking, but uh, it's just what goes on in my brain. Not a good brain. So say, come on, you don't need that fish. <laughs> um, and then, hey, you want to hear a joke. So this next part then, it's got three parts. And it's all, again, this is going to be completely random for you. This is going to be completely random for you. Um, so again, it's probably worth just having a look on Google. But for me, I choose, what's the smallest full-grown tree you ever heard of? Then I choose... I've seen one no bigger than my hand. And then just say a palm tree. Now, I'm going to get the achievement there for making the achievement called Make Like a Tree and Laugh. So, that one should be good. Um, I'll, I'll tell you the other two jokes now. Um, but I'm just going to show you exactly what you should do. So now, you should be able to talk to the tree again. And then, there should be one... Two dialogue options, one for saying goodbye, 
and the other one for basically following up on that joke. But the full tree one, the joke I just told, doesn't uh, happen like that. For whatever reason, I'm not sure why. So if you see th these set of dialogue options, or more than two, you have basically it, you just have to reload the manual save and sadly go again. I'm not sure why that happens, um, but it does. So that's what we're going to do. So if you do see the what's the smallest full growth tree you ever heard of, best to avoid that one or just reload your manual save and go again. Um, so yeah, just go back into your manual save, we'll do it again. And by the way, so the second joke, did you hear about the first National Tree Bank? Now, I'm just going to basically smash all the dialogue with the tree here, just, just smash it out. It doesn't make a difference, it just takes a little bit longer, like 10 seconds or so. Um, but the second joke is, did you hear about the first National Tree Bank? It closed down, and don't worry, it just started a new branch. And then the third joke is, say, do you know old Pete the Pine Tree? Well, I hear he got into some trouble. It seems he was being really naughty. So they are the other two jokes. Um, hopefully you get the same one that I do, but just in case um, you don't, then, you know, I've got that one. So, as you can see, I've got the old Pete the Pine Tree one now. So, we'll go down all the way to the bottom. Say, do you know old Pete the Pinny Tree? The Pinest Tree. Again, if you get the smallest full-grown tree one, reload your save again. Uh, well, I hear he got into some really big trouble. And then, it was, seems he was being really naughty. Ah, ha, ha. That's hilarious. And remember the second joke? If you got the joke, did you hear about the first National Tree Bank? As the first dialogue option. Then choose, it closed down. And don't worry, it just started a new branch. So, now you should be able to talk to the tree again. You should now get the relevant dialogue option. Uh, relevant to the joke. Put, choose that one. We got a split, and you should now get the How'd I Do achievement. So, again, these random ones are a bit of a pain in the ass, kind of. Um, especially when dialogue glitches out or bugs out or whatever. But, well, we get there in the end, don't we? So, now we can pick up the talking fish. Now we've got to return back to Merryloft. So, we're going all the way up, all the way up to Curtis's house, and straight up the. Well, <laughs> straight up the hole. There's no other way to say that. So once we get back then to the central area of Merryloft, we need to go um, to the offering area. So we need to go down the path, and then we need to go to the right. Uh, head out along the path then to the right. Oh sorry, we're at the offering area, offering area before we go into the central bit. Right, quickly, um, don't die on the clouds. Try and get on the um, wooden beams, wooden paths or whatever. And now we can talk to Rocky and McGiggy. Hello, McGiggy. Right, now choose... I want a cupcake, because, you know, it's a cupcake, man. Everyone wants a freaking cupcake, except those with diabetes and stuff. That's not good. Um, I accidentally choose what if I paid you tomorrow. Uh, what you were supposed to say if you wanted was, how about a trade? I could give you something. Otherwise, you can just say, well, bye, good luck with the bake sale. Not that you just... I mean, you're covered in Sesame Street birds and not many people, so real good luck. Um, so, yeah, it, it doesn't matter what you say there, really, you should be okay. But now we're going to go down to the path, leading to the rear, where you can see Grandpa Beast Bell Ender, Bell Beast Ender, and the little girl, I forget her name, uh, having a bit of a, having a bit of a, whatever. So we need to talk to uh, Beast Ender and Chit, that's her name, Chit. Now say, do you know, guys know any place to get some money? It's the top option. And then CH, T, or CH apostrophe T, chit, will give us a coin. So now we can just press B to back out of the conversation, and we're going to return back to the nesting grounds and give that coin to Rocky and McGiggy, and they will finally give us a goddamn curb coke. So, heading on up, heading on up till the end. Heading on up. I know you love it. I know you won't me. Right, so get this wheel, which looks like a coin, or the coin that looks like a wheel. 
We can now finally have one cupcake. I don't know what the hell he's supposed to do with that one coin. But, uh, well, good luck with that anyway. So, use the spoon on Rocky and Mgggy. Doesn't matter which one, because it all ends up the same crap. So, um... <laughs> No trades? Well, fine. You get diabetes, that's up to you. Well, those cupcakes do look diabetically delicious. So, into your inventory, use the spoon on the cupcake. Um, I don't think the words diabetically delicious have ever been uttered, have they? <laughs> well, they have now, and you're welcome. Right, so when we've done that, so that should be 24 and 25 out of 30, by the way, now, for using the spoon. So after this bit, we can now just head all the way back to the left. And remember to, to not stand in the clouds for too long, otherwise you'll fall and you'll get rescued by a bird anyway. So we can head left out of here. Now we're going to give the cupcake to Vela's dad and Walter. Not Walter, Walter. So just go ahead, give the cupcake to them. Delicious. So what Walter is going to do is lick the frosting off the cupcake before giving it back to us, which is... I mean, that's pretty vile, man. That's... I mean, was there no COVID in the clouds? Is COVID in the clouds not a thing? Because that was disgusting. I just should have shoved it right in the end of his big, fat, chunky nose. But we can't do that. So, use the spoon on Vela's dad. That should be 26 out of 30 now. Okay, that's uh, very impressive of you, uh, Vela's dad. Right, so we're going to go back to the right, back to the nesting grounds, and we're going back towards Grandpa Beast Bellender and... Or kt, shht, I don't know, whatever, whatever a bloody name is. But anyway, we're coming here. We're going to give the cupcake now to Grandpa Bell, Grandpa Beast Bell. And what he's going to do, he's basically going to refrost the cake for us, but he's now got no more frosting in his cane, which for, to me is hilarious that he's got a cane full of frosting. That is just, it's a genius idea. But what he's going to do is give the cane to us to get it refilled. So, uh, we need to use the spoon a couple more times here. Once on Grandpa Beast and Enders. Uh, of course they didn't, Grandpa. Of course not. In my day, we didn't do nothing because there's nothing good. Now, open up your inventory. Use the spoon on the cane. And that should be 28 now out of 30. So again, I think for me, it was like 32 or 33 uh, different things I had to use before the achievement unlocked. Buttons for nowums. We're going to head backums to the central areums and... We're going to climb the ladder to Big Jess Dog's nest. So go to the left and go all the way to the left to Jesse the big, huge Sesame Street bird. Looks like someone tried this ladder. So let's take a little look at this note. Hum. No, you actually don't have to. Um, but what we are going to do is use the spoon on Jess Wald. I mean, she is on the acid trip there. She is, like, living the dream. That is definitely 3 a.m. in the club where you don't know what you're doing and you're almost about to pass out. That is... Well, that's that's a hell of a life. Anyway, use the spoon on Jesse, and that will be 29 out of 30. And then what we could do is just follow the path to the left and go back to uh, James and the small fruit peach tree. What we have is the fish eye god things. Uh, for some reason, they can't use their stick to just bat one bit of peach off, then... Then, hey, that's not my problem. You shouldn't be so goddamn stupid. Uh, but we headed towards the tree, sorry. We did fall down the center of the tree trunk. Did this on purpose. Uh, we're going to walk along the left branch, and we're going to pick up a peach. One of them beautiful squatting-ass peaches. <coughs> and now we can use open our inventory and use the spoon on the peach. Eventually. Eventually. Okay, right, so we did that. Right, sorry, apologies. Um, <laughs> right, what... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Did we not do it? Oh, Jesus, no. No, we didn't do it. So, now we use the spoon on the peach. This should get you the Are You Trying to Get Rid of Me achievement. If it doesn't, don't worry, we've got literally plenty of other opportunities to use the spoon. So, we'll get that in just a hot second. Right, what we're going to do now is speak to Big Gus, the leafy bearded legend. And now we need to choose, what's that thing sticking in the fruit? <laughs> yes, it's, <laughs> well, it's not from down below, I can tell you that much. Nobody would want that fruit then. Hey, can I borrow that little fruit tapper? This is my fruit tapper, I grew it myself. And now choose, I'll let you get back to your hard steroid infused juicing. 
Okay, so Gus has given us the fruit tap, and now what we need to do is climb it back up to the tree trunk, and we need to talk to the Dead Eye God's bodyguards. Up from a hidden pit. And what I actually do, I actually use the spoon. I don't know if it, this counts or if it uh, makes any progress towards it, but because we are still needing 30, I thought I'd just use the spoon on them anyway, just to give them a little go. As it turns out, it didn't seem to work. So, we need to speak to them just as usual, and now we need to choose. If you give me back those rab, uh, rabs, if you give me back those robes, I promise Alex won't press charges. Even though if you got a six, six, six and a half tenth forehead like Alex, then you probably will. Now choose, I'll fight you for those robes, no problem. I need them to help my mommy. My mommy. And then choose, I'll be back. Oh, in fact, actually, the sp with the spoon opportunities, you can actually use the spoon on these bodyguards. So that is the 31st out of 30, anyway, that you can use. Um... But, again, if the achievement does unlock, don't panic, we'll come back to that. We can just use the cane now on the dead Eye God's bodyguards. And then, a little bit of a cutscene's gonna happen, <laughs> and then we can now pick up the robes that they drop and leave. You're lucky she's blind, kid. I didn't miss him because I'm blind, Courtney. I missed them because I can see. I've been, I've been pretty. I've been blinded now. I see. Now we've got two naked fish things that are just running around with their flaps hanging out. Fish flaps, you know, those little gills. Fish flaps. Anyway, you can. Um, well, I, I again, I use the spoon on it. I'm literally using the spoon on bloody everything just to see what the what the big happy haps is. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I don't think this makes particularly too much of a difference, but just make sure that you've picked up those robes anyway. And then what we can do is now just go to the right, and we're going to stand in Jesse's nest. In fact, I think it's the spoon opportunity I use with the eggshells in a moment that unlocks the achievement for me. So stand in Jesse's nest, and we're going to use the fruit tapper on Jesse's egg. Remember, she is now she is now 4 a.m. in the club. She is deep. She is deep happening right there. Uh, don't know why I just went to the central area, by the way. We need to use the fruit tapper on Big Jessie's egg while she's slightly incapacitated. <laughs> As it were. Anytime, buddy. Yeah, anytime you want to do this. Right, there we go. So, I'm so sorry for wasting your time. So, using that, we've... Oh, Jessie's got out of her hangover. Her, her drunk, drunken club hangover. And now we can use the spoon on the eggshells that are left behind. And again... This is what uh, done it for me. Plus, we need to pick the eggshells up as well. So, remember to use the spoon on the eggshells. And then we can pick up the eggshells. Doesn't matter if you do it in your inventory or out of your inventory or whatever. As long as you use the spoon on them. And there it is then. So, it took a friggin' while. But the Are You Trying to Get Rid of Me achievement finally unlocks. All right, so now we don't have to worry about spoons and freaking gar grabbing Garys anymore, which I'm totally happy with. Now we're going to go down the ladder at the forefront of the screen, and we need to talk to Brother Lightbird. Lightbeer. Buzz Lightbeer. So just speak to him first, and you'll need to click on him three times, basically. So we don't actually have a conversation with him, we just need to click on him three times before he tells you that he is sick of fish. Which, you know, the same amount of fish will probably make you end up spewing. I've done that before. I had the same fish for, like, days, weeks on end. The same, I think it was from, like, Farm Foods or something. In, uh, farm Foods, UK stuff. And, yeah, it made, made me end up spewing. It was disgusting. And it put me off that particular type of fish for life. So, I can see what Brother Light Beer is doing here. So, make sure that achievement unlocks the sick of fish achievement. And then we can talk to Twyla and Vela's mommy. Now choose, what were you guys talking about when I walked up? Which is pretty rude, to be honest. Imagine going up to two random women and going, Hey, hey what's uh, what's going on? I'm in. Maybe he tried to get you, but something came up. Swinging. Now I know a lot of people's ears are just pricked up at that then. Swinging. Oh, really? What, the party? No, no, no. Well, at least your costume is cool. 
Where do I put my keys? And then choose, do you think you could make me a costume? And again, we've got another spoon opportunity. So if you still need the achievement, you can use the spoon on Vela's mommy. Uh, so again, I still show you anyway, even though I've got the achievement because I'm just a nice guy. Right, what we need to do now is give the baby-sized hazard radiation suit and the robes to Twyla. So remember, it's the uh, fat baby Michelin man style looking suit. So now we've got that. Now we need to give the fish robes to Twyla. T -t Twyla. It's literal fish. So don't worry about it. Just do it. Just do it. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Just do it. Okay, there we go. So we're doing it. So now we've got an adult-sized hazard radiation suit. And we're going to do a couple of more things in Shell Mound. So, head right back there. Remember, we need to go up this ladder. And we need to go to the dead on left. And just go back to Shell Mound. Hopefully, you should know the way by now. If not, then sorry. Uh, by the way, that achievement that we just unlocked, what's up with the feathers, um, if you didn't unlock it there, it's supposed to unlock after you give the hazard radiation suit to Alex. So, if you didn't unlock the achievement there, don't panic, you will get it as soon as you do that. Right, so, into Shell Mound, show the talking fish to Coral. Coral! Sounds very, uh, you know, walking deady. Coral! Okay, now we can show the crochet hook to Coral! So, talking fish first, and then the crochet hook. Okay. And then with the dialogue option, then make sure to choose. But please promise to leave some fish, some fish in the ocean for future generations. And Dara we go. So, Carol will now basically throw away the wire that she was using. So that uh, we've got some extra bits of wire. Again, if we've moved, missed any of the spoon opportunities and you need some more, use the spoon on the wire in your inventory. Big wire ball. So make sure to use that. And now, well, now we're going to start getting into the nitty gritty of the most annoyingest, randomest puzzle in anything I've ever done so far. So uh, choose what's cooking when you talk to Shay's dad. Yo, good looking. Yo, square head, what's cooking? Now we can just press the B button to back out. And now here's another random puzzle. So we need to use the spoon on the bowl of chum to get a pH reading. For you, once again, it's going to be completely random. For me, it was two. For you, it could be five, seven, ten. It could be literally anything. So we need to get the chum to give a pH reading of seven. So if you use the peach on the mixture, it will decrease the pH level by two. And if you add the eggshells to the mixture, it will increase the pH level by three. So what we have to do then, you have to check as many as we've got. So for me, it was two. So I end up just putting the peach in, which puts it down to zero. And then, <laughs> eventually, so I end up putting it down to zero, and then I use the eggshells three times, and then the peach once again, so that goes up to seven. So, we are down to zero, but like I said, the number could be random for you, so you've just got to do a little bit of maths. Remember, the eggshells add three, and the peach subtracts two. So, just, you know, whatever your number is, just do it from there. But for me, I've got, I'm going to... I done one peach, which got it to zero, three eggshells, which put it to nine, and then one peach, which put it to seven. So, uh, time to use that basic math you've done in high school about 20 billion years ago, which you can't remember. Any luck? I'm detecting a pH level of 
Seven. Eureka! It's perfectly balanced, sir. Nice work, son. Now for the final ingredient. Right, okay, so I we're gonna get another achievement here by the way. The undercarriage on this baby is short. And again, when we give the hazard radiation suit to Alex, you should get the what's up with all the feathers achievement if you didn't get it earlier. So you should get this one. And uh, you should get one or two at least here if you didn't get the feathers achievement earlier on. So, here we go then. This is, and this done my complete, absolute, absolute ball nutter butter bum sacking. It took me hours, generally, generally hours to figure this puzzle out. <clears throat> Again, it's another random one. Um, so, let me just try and do some explaining. So... What you have to do, um, what you're supposed to do is actually go to Vela, um, do a little bit on there, um, as we put the wire, we can now put the wire and use it on the hexipad, and this is the most, this was the most biggest pain in my butt snatch that I've ever had the mispleasure of doing, but I'm going to try and explain it well to you anyway, as quickly, um, well, I mean, I think it's about five minutes, I think, of explanations I'm going to do now, uh, just to do this one, so, you'll always have three wires, Blue will be first, yellow will be second, red will be third. Now, do you have your pen and paper handy? Because this is exactly where you're going to need it. Um, I tried looking at guides, and I tried looking at so many things, and it just it would not sit with me. My brain was switching off completely. Um, but, and I've got to give the biggest, massivest shout-out to Curious Duck over on Steam. Who come up with this just perfect way. So this puzzle here. When you put the hexipal on. These puzzles. Or, or these symbols. Will be completely random for you. Okay. These are going to be completely random for you. So they're not going to be the same. But there is a picture. Basically. Um, when you go over to Vela's second act. There will be a picture. When you finally meet Shay's mommy. With a. It's a picture of Shay. The dad and the mum. With a little back, with a little picture in the background, and again, I'm going to show you exactly what that picture is. But that picture um, stays the exact same all the time. So the <laughs> so the only thing random about this puzzle is what we're looking at right now: the blue, yellow, and red lines, uh, rows of of symbols. They are the only ones that are completely random. But let me just explain, basically from the start, what we're going to do. So, what we're going to do, grab your pen and paper, or you can use Microsoft Paint if you want as well, whatever's easier for you, but just make sure you've got one of those two things. We we are going to note this down because, it, it, trust me, it is just the easiest way to do this, okay? So, we need to draw six points of a hexagon, i.e. The, the exact same as your hexipal. So, we've got one at the top, and then... It kind of looks like a clock, so if you, if you look at it at a clock, it goes 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. But I'm just going to number it 1 to 6 as usual. Um, I just I just find it easier to number it 1 to 6. But draw the shape, same shape as a hexagon, like your hexipal. <clears throat> and then what we are going to do, we are going to label it. And you're going to label it the exact same as I do. Which will be, the blue one will be going across, the yellow one will be going across, and the red will be going down. Um, yeah, this, it can be slightly confusing, um, because what you think you might have to do, you, you might think you have to get the colours the exact same that is in the photograph, which I'm going to show you in just a little bit. Right, so again, apologies if it's a bit sort of confusing at the minute, but it will all make sense. So, make sure then that you've got your pen and paper, your Microsoft Paint, and you've drawn the six circles of a hexagon. This is the picture in question. Now, you see these sh uh, the shapes, the symbols in the background? This, don't worry about those, okay? Those symbols will always be the exact same for you. So, you've got the sort of half-drawn triangle, the two arrows up and down. And then the two arrows side to side with like three diamonds. And then the coloured in triangle. And the two sort of half triangles if you want to call it that. So what we basically have to do. Is. We just need to match those symbols up. On the hexipal. That is what gets it charged up and working. Now you might just think. Well it's completely simple. But the reason we need a pen and paper. Is because we are going to write down. Exactly where those symbols are. 
because if you're trying to do it sort of off by hand and if you sort of try remembering it by yourself it can get overwhelmingly confusing as it did me plenty of times so writing it down is just the easiest way so again make sure then that you do like i said you've got your, your six points of the hexagon and we're going to pick him we're going to go ahead and just pick our hexi pal back up eventually so again just ignore these uh symbols for now just ignore them for now, and then what, we, what we're going to do then, wire it up exactly the same way that I have done. So from basically 6 till 2 blue, uh, 4 till 3 yellow, and then 1 till 4 red. Oh, sorry, you know what I meant. So there we go. So we've got blue, yellow, and red. And now what we can see, again, this part is going to be completely random for you. So as I said, the first wire, the blue wire, will go from 0.6 to 0.2. The second yellow wire goes from 0.5 to 0.3, and the third wire goes from 0.1 to 0.4, which is the red one. So, what you have to do now is you just have to note down the symbols to the point of the hexagon that you uh, that we've mapped out in the paper, or sort of on Microsoft Point. So, the blue one will... So, the blue hexagon, or the blue sort of half triangle at the top one for me, will be at 0.6, and... And at point two will be, sorry, at point two will be the up and down arrows. And then with the yellow wire, as you can see there, so for me, I'm going to put the three diamonds in point five, which is the left side, because the left side is always the start, the right side is always the end. And then the colored triangle I will put in point three. And then the uh, two arrows, which are pointing left and right, I will put at the start point, which was number one, and the... Uh, sort of half two half triangles or whatever. I will put that at point four So make sure that you've mapped all these ones out and you've drawn these so remember uh, This part's going to be completely random for you. So again, just draw it as you see it So wherever you started from the left So what you should have done was start it from point six to point two from point five to point three and point one to point four That should be your start. So then again, you should map the half triangle Whatever thing that is, again, it's going to be random for you. So whatever your one is at the top left blue one, you need to put that at point 6. And the right blue one, you need to put that at point 2. The yellow left yellow one, you need to put at point 5. And the uh, upside down colored in triangle or whatever that is, you need to put that at point 3. And then, of course, the red one, the left one, you need to put at what, point 1. And the second one at point 4. Now, as you can see, I've left the diagram there in the top right-hand corner as well for you, uh, just so you don't get totally confused. So, hopefully, I've explained that as well as I can. Um, so, now what we have to do is match up the symbols. Now, you have to match up the symbols exactly as it is. So, of course, so you, what we need to do then, again, don't worry about the colour. Because that's what I was getting a bit confused at. I thought it had to be the same colour to start off with. It literally doesn't. All we need to do is just um, match up the symbols together. So, get rid of these. Chop these bad boy Billy ball sacks off. Eventually. There we go. So, we're going to do that. So, slip them off. Now, we just have to match up the symbols. That's all we've got to do. So, don't panic about the colours. Just look at whatever... Wherever your... Um, half drawn triangle thing and up and down arrow is wherever your two are at the top row of the picture on the right hand side there that is where you need to do it. so for me it was already on point six to point two so for me the half drawn triangle was at point six and the up and down arrow was already at point two so that's why i'm leaving that one there so that's fine those are all good now we after you do that you need to then find the left and right arrow with these sort of three diamond type looking triangle things again not worrying about the, the colors we are just focusing solely on matching those two up that's all we have to do now um so for me it was going to be 0 0.1 to 0.5 and then and of course you have to do it in a specific order as well so for me it was 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 with the very final one and then what you should do is put your hexipal on and as long as Shay says something like, I've got a good feeling about that pattern, and you see this particular cutscene, that means you know you've done it right. If not, what's going to happen is, um, 
Shay is going to... Well, he's basically just not going to work. He's going to put him back on the Hexipal. And you just have to try again. But that is how you get that achievement done. And I know it's bloody confusing. But hopefully I've, I try to explain that the best and easiest method that I could. In terms of drawing everything down. And again, hopefully... And with leaving the picture and the diagram in the top right hand corner. I hope that helped. I hope I explained it well enough. Um... And after we give the Hexipal to Alex, we should now get another achievement as well called... And they do windows! Give him the flute as well. Um, and then basically what we can do now, this is the end of the chapter. Now this took a solid, genuine, solid two and a half hours for me to figure out there. Um, now, Alex basically gives us this note, but this is not random. So it's always going to be mid, mid, high, low, mid. Uh, so this is not random, so don't worry about this part, writing that bit down. Uh, it'll be the, the exact same for you. Otherwise, we can now just press the white button and we can finally go to Vela's icon to start her second act. So, uh, to be honest, I mean, please let me know if I explain that puzzle well. Hopefully that you got it sort of first time or you didn't take too long on it because... I tried to pace it, I tried to explain it as best and as well as I could. So hopefully you've got that. And we've moved on now to Act 2 for Vela, which will be the last act before the small finale. So, as we begin, skip the cutscene and talk to the knife. And then we just need to exhaust all dialogue options there. We just need to exhaust all dialogue. The ship. Where can I find Mom? Beach me. Have a knife from you're coming with me. And for the record, I... Hey there, Vela boy. Flying through the sky so fancy free. Right, so after we've exhausted all the dialogue options, the knife will be added to Vela's inventory, so we can now go to the right. Now, we're going to grab the helmet from the fissure, or the big spacey hole, the big white hole in the wall. Nothing wrong with a big, big white hole and sticking your nut in that. As long as it doesn't clamp down on you, of course, like that, then you might have a couple of problems. So we got the helmet. Now what we can do is use the knife on the pipe that is dangling from the sort of top doorway on the right there. And we're going to get a short piece of hose. Now this is another random sort of element. Too many random elements. Too many random puzzles. But this is more just trial and error. So it, it shouldn't take you too long. All we need to do is sort of connect the pipe to one end and connect it to the other end. Um, one of them is going to work. So... It's a bit of trial and error, it doesn't make a difference, so you can start with the right one, you can start with the left one, doesn't make a difference. Uh, of course, there's only a couple of ways you can do this, so the middle and the bottom one, and then what you need to do then is back out. Uh, nope, what we need to do is get a this little honeycomb thing sticking out of the wall so we can fall down onto. That's our primarily goal. So, yep, stick it in the top one and the bottom, that doesn't work. Stick it in the top and the middle, and they, it comes out of the bottom. It comes out of the bottom. It does, but the bottom is not what we need. We need higher up. So, uh, grab your pipe back, back, back out, and just go to the right-hand side set of steam. Steamed hams? No, steamed clams. Mm -mm. And then just try it again. Doesn't work. So let's try the top pipe and the middle one. And finally, that is exactly what we are needing to get. So it's sort of halfway between. Again, it's always worth trying the same as me first. It might always be the two top right-hand corners. But I do believe it is a bit more trial and error. <laughs> My Australian is on point. That's going on the Hall of Gamers podcast the other day. I'm, I'm, I'm a fully-fledged Australian Welshman now. All right? Right. Then let's do this. Ah. Nah, screw it, I bollocks it. Right, use the knife, we get the long hose pipe. <laughs> we do get the long hose pipe. Now this is another bit of trial and error. So we need to connect the long hose pipe to one of these ends. <laughs> and then we need to go to the other side. So we need to plug it in the left and the right hand side. So I just started off with the bottom. And then uh, get rid of the short pipe. We don't need the short pipe. So just plug it into the bottom. And, oh, it seemed to work first time for me. So I don't know if I got lucky with that, or if whatever you do, uh, you'll always get the first cutscene anyway. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's a bit less trial and error, and that always works first time. But we, again, you'll know you've got the correct solution when we get this cutscene, and we start floating away and into a spache. 
and somehow Vela's big fat head doesn't get more massive and dies. Right, so we need to use the helmet to lure the grabbing hand towards Vela, but you need to do it when Vela is up enough and the grabbing hand is pointing towards you. So, like so. Because obviously if Vela's pointing away and the hand's pointing away, she can't obviously grab it. So you need to do it when Vela's head is sticking up. Next, we need to use the grabbing hand to grab the boot that is floating on the Vela's right. So we need to wait until Vela's head is sort of up right there and until the thumb goes away. Again, bit of time, kind of bit of a trial and error, but it's all good. And again, just do the same. Use the hand and the boot. And again, we need to wait until Vela's sort of sticking head sticking up, pointing the right way. And then the hand is free, and then this is what should happen. So if you're kind of worried about these things on the speed run, again, don't panic, because you can always manually save. And I'll I will I'll tell you all about the manual saving uh, tricks and stuff anyway. So you, um, yeah, so you shouldn't have to worry. But as soon as that bit's done, we are now into El Spaso Shippy Mo's. Right, so, welcome to the ship. We obviously haven't been here since Shea Act 1. Now we're going to walk left through the Escapimo Corridorimo. We're going to go through this particular hallway. Now, see this little flashy thing, this little flashlight hexipal? He is going to be a bit of a pain in the bum to snatch achievement later on. Where again, we have to do something first time without failing. It's a pain in the butt. But we'll come back to that later. So, we're going to continue walking along the corridor. Uh, get rid of this obstacle that is in the way. So much junk in here. Mate, you haven't been to the friggin' avalanche ice cream room yet. Then you will... Well, then you will change your mind. It's not all junk. Although it does... I suppose it does give you level 12 diabetes if you eat enough, but it's worth it. Right, now we're going to go through to the left door. So we can get into the left corridor, as it is called. Walk past the kitchen, of course, the spoon symbol with the kitchen. We're going to walk past that, and we're going to see a door with a flashing window, like this one. And we need to click on it to talk to Shay's mommy. Right, a couple of... <coughs> Excuse me, un-Covid related, promise. So we need to choose these um, options in exact order. My name is Vela Tart Tangerine, and I'm here to take you down. Engi engineering department, just a routine maintenance visit. The ship's on fire. You have to get out of here. All clear. It's safe to come out now. Is this Mog Chothra's brain? It's me, Shay. That's how she literally talks. Oh, sorry. Can you open this door first? And then, it's me, Shay. So basically, we're exhausting all the dialogue options. Uh... More or less. I was injured. It's affecting my voice. It's me. Don't you recognize me? Not a very good Shay voice, Hon. And okay. I'm not really Shay. And that wasn't a very good Vela voice uh, from me there. So we need to basically convince her to open the door. And we have to look like Shay. So enter Shay's room on the left. And we're going to nip through the old vent of life. Old Marek's vent, of course. We went here quite a few times. Tied up in this I why yeah, just stop. You're not a detective. Just get your butt snatch in there, girl. Okay, so Marek seems to have been crushed. Hilariously, unluckily, funnily. The last one. The last one. Your mum's the last one. Now, shut up. Now say, can we stop this ship? Can we stop this ship? And then say, can you open any of the locked doors on this ship? I uh, thank you very much. Because as it turns out, we know you can. Right, press B to back out of the conversation. We're just gonna we're just gonna leave you to die, if that's alright, pal. No problem. Right, we can head left through the door that Marek has just unlocked, because the vent is now uh been blocked off. You know, you could probably just move it yourself. We're gonna walk through Marek's hideout through to the left. And we're gonna go into the trophy room. Ooh, interesting. Sorry, TikTok has ruined my life and I don't even like it. I don't even watch it. So go through the elevator or the teleporter. The teleporter. This is going to make Vela's head bigger, but it isn't quite big enough to pass for Shay just yet because, as we all know, Shay does have pure Hey Arnold football head or Hey Arnold um, egg hand head. 
You know what I mean? Because American football is not football. It's called egg hand. Because football is a ball to your foot. Anyway, more America versus Britain butt snatch in there. So we're going to go into the blue door on the right hand side when we get out of here. And we're going to take the blue teleporter. We're going to return to the hallway first. Sorry. So we're going to return to the hallway. So basically go all the way to the end of this room. Go into the... Um, into this room at the end, which is called the hallway. And we're going to go back into the teleporter room. Uh, which is going to basically make our beloved head large enough. Yeah. I've All I've wanted is a big butt. And you could you could have made that bigger. Instead, you made my head bigger. Well, screw you, teleporter. <laughs> so, what we need to do now, when our head is large enough, we now need to head back to Shay's mommy. Uh, but we can't actually go through any of the teleporters because it'll bollock up our head size again. So, we just need to go into this big control room and to the left. There we go. Right, now we're coming up to another missable achievement where we, ha where we have to answer these questions first time again. So, and for some reason, this skips, this cutscene in this dialogue, you cannot skip. So, just keep... Uh, it's me, Shay. Right, this is what you have to do. Choose Mr. These are, the, these are the start of the questions, by the way. So, make a manual save if you wish. But choose Mr. first. Mr. Mr. Come on, you douchebag. Okay, right, sorry, there we go. Mr. Huggy. Huggy. <coughs> yes. A very, it's a very, it's a very good uh, Shay voice. It's convincing me incredibly. Right, she's going to answer another question. Blah blah blah. So say, please, can we not do this? Please, can we not do this? And sorry, I thought we couldn't skip any of the dialogue. As it turns out, we could. Right, and the first, and uh, the third and final one, which ah, oh, come on, Matt, bro, we got places to be, bro. We got places, we got places to be, bro. We can push it to B. Okay, so you can't actually get through this particular dialogue option. Polka dot afro, polka dot afro, afro, polka dot circus afro. Alright, thanks for that. Who wants to be a millionaire question? So the first one is purple. So the second option there, purple. Size 4, which would be the top answer. And polka dot, polka dot, polka dot, afro. Oh, Shay, oh, yeah. And then what you should get then is the what can I say I know boots achievement. Damn, Shay's mom looking fine for a cartoon. And a square triangle nose. A square triangle, a regular triangle nose. And did I just say a um, drawing just looked fine? Okay, time to um, I put myself into an institution. Goodbye. Okay, maybe not yet. There's worse people than me out there. Right, so um, what we can do is just... I think we can just say, who are you? And why have you been kidnapping girls with this ship? Sorry, got a bit uh, got a bit off it there. And then choose, where's the big mom computer that controls this ship? Now choose, my name is Vela Tangerine. I shot down your ship. Well, good for fucking you, mate. Good for freaking you, yeah. Then choose the wolf told me about you. Yeah, no thanks. Now choose, I want some goddamn answers. How did you get your hair looking so good? And then choose, you are not in space. Look at that window. So, after the cutscene, we're going to be now left to our own devices. What you should get... Um, now this, sorry, so you should have got the hope achievement as well. There is hope. There it is. So, this is the picture that we were on about earlier on. So this is what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to write these bits down and then go back to Shay and then do the puzzle. But of course, that's just all a bit of a pain in the ass, which is why I showed it to you the way I did. But that is where the picture is if you wanted to do it that way. So, what we are going to do now, uh, we don't need to speak to the circle-headed Beast, that is Shay's mom. What we're going to do is um, have a conversation with Marek. So, again, it's basically the big giant screen that's behind you. And for some reason, my moronic brain had a bit of a fart. Had a bit of a brain fart right here. But there we go. So, click on the screen. 
And then all you got to do is just exhaust all of the dialogue options to uncover, to unlock the not everyone has the stomach for perfection achievement. Where are you taking us? Are the girls you kidnapped really still on board? Is there really a plague on? If we're a plague, why? That boy, her son. We want out of. I gotta go. Yes. Relax and enjoy. And yet another one of those delicious, rare, diamond sounding, beautiful achievements and locks. So, what we have to do, we're going to talk to Shay's mom again. We're going to exhaust all of the new conversation options this time. And now, after we do this, we have to basically escape from the room. So, we're going to pick up the fork, which is from the salad. the sort of top left of the desk there. Um, you can make a manual save here, but what we're going to do, we're going to, there's basically another puzzle we got to complete without error on our first attempt, which is to do with the Hexipal flashlight dude. But we'll make a manual save as soon as we get to that point. Um, but again, it's always worth making manual saves just in case. Uh, <laughs> just in case you're a lot more paranoid than I am. Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to interact with the central console, which is the big helmet at the top there. And what we're going to do first, we're going to press the left arrow. So there's basically a couple of arrows that we need to press um, in order to go to different locations, different rooms. And also, there are eight sad faces we need to turn upside down. So, left first into Shay's room. Now, we can click on the arm at the top of the screen there to remove the debris. The, de the, de the debris. Or if you're proper British, the debris. Remove the debris from the bed and move inflatable Shay into the kitchen. Okay. Cheers, inflatable Shay. Right, so that bit's done. What we're going to do now is click on the sad face. We have to remove the eight sad faces from the Bassinostra. So this is the first sad face right here. Click on him. And he is going to... Well, he's going to explode. But the rest are going to be happy. So that's all that matters, right? But that is the first one. Now we can click the right arrow to be taken back into the left corridor. Unlock the kitchen door. Because a lot of a couple of these doors will have locks on them. So click on the door once to unlock it. And then go inside the kitchen. There is another sad face that we need to turn into one happy face. There it is. So that'll be the second out of eight. And we can just exit the kitchen back into the left corridor. And then what we're going to do is click the right arrow now to head into the fake control room. See, we're, we're getting there. It's slow progress, but we're getting there, boy. Right. You see the red door basically underneath the console type thing there? We're going to unlock that. Because, of course, we're going to need these, so just unlock that. Ignore the lightning bolts for now. That is for the achievement coming up ever so shortly. Then click the right arrow to head into the right corridor. Empty. Now, there are five sad faces. Basically, the little hexagon ones. Little hexagon icons we need to use. So, two on the left. Make sure to click those two. And, of course, the faces will turn like a smiley green face. Unlock the avalanche room, the ice cream room. Get the hexagon, the happy face in the middle, unlock the next room, and then two on the right-hand side. Make sure that they are done. So that's five faces and two five faces to turn uh, into happy faces and two doors to unlock. And on the very left-hand side is the final face that we should unlock. So pop that one up, and you'll you'll get that turn that brown up the down achievement. Now unlock the door. Right. So there we go. We've unlocked the door to the runaway train mission. Now this is the pain in the ass. Make sure to make a manual save. Again, very important that we need to be making sure we're going to be making a manual save because you have to do this first time. So basically, what you have to do, the electric, we need to get this robot hexipal thing to basically fix the electric in the place. But what you, what you have to do, he has to do it in the dark. So what I'm going to show you is basically we have to Hit the first electric bolt directly by the hexipal, and then almost immediately hit the sun icon, which is just by the door. Now, with that, what he'll start doing, as long as it's dark, he will keep walking to the left. If you take too long or you're too quick with it, and he starts walking back towards the right, that means you've messed up, and that you have to make uh, a man. Uh, you have to reload your manual save to try again. Um, there's only three rooms. They're not overly difficult. For me, it was the timing in the second room, which got me a couple of times. But that is the, the, the basic nooks of it. 
So when he gets up to this electrical point, he starts fixing it, and he starts fixing it really quick, which is why you more or less have to uh, click the electric bolt and the sun more or less at the same time, like one or two seconds after each other, because he doesn't need to fix the sun, so the sun's um, dial will take a long while to get back, so he can just walk past it. But let me show you. So click the electric, and then almost immediately click the sun. So he's going to start fixing that, and as you can see, the dial going around the sun takes a while. So now you can click the, the electric on the left, because it's still dark. And when it lights up, he should be good to go. And then as soon as he gets over here, just click the other electric bolt. And do that. Now, if you do fail, you again, you have to start from the beginning. So click the sun, and then immediately click the electric bolt to the left of it. So we're going to start walking. Now, after a couple of seconds, click the bolt in the middle of the room and then the sun at the top. And then as soon as we start walking to the left, just click the electric bolt by the avalanche ice cream door. And then click the next one by the door. That should That is how you should get through that. So it's more a case of just clicking these things quite quickly so we can just carry on going by. Now, this is another bit. These are timed bits. So the floor right there is the next electrical panel. Then hit the one on the left. Now we have to be quick with this one. At the top, make sure to hit that one and the one at the top right. And then one at the bottom, make sure to click that. So as long as you hit all five of those, as you can see on the console, there is a little piece that's, that, that needs attention. So that is where the hexipal goes. So, and again, it is timed because if you take too long, as you can see, the electric bolts, they're behind closed doors. So as soon as we jump down, then click the electric bolt by the door. And then he should start walking to the left. Now, now that is basically it. You've basically got the achievement. But there is still quite a little bit left to do. Um, so, But don't get paranoid or anything. We just need to click the electric bolt here. And sadly our Hexipal friend is going to get sucked up. And we're going to have to save his ass. Oh, it's all just going horribly, horribly wrong. So let's head into the kitchen. And then what we need to do is choose the Taco Pill Tuesday. We have to keep clicking on the face until it uh, says Taco Pill Tuesday. We need to use the arm. So make sure it says Taco Pill Tuesday, which sounds very Lego movie-ish. Um, if you know, if you know, you know. And that gets rid of the hexy pile. That pops him back down. Um, use the electric again. And then as soon as we can, we're going to press the left arrow to go into the next room. Press the electric again, and that's basically it. So, like I said, if at any point the Hexipal started walking back towards the right, you would have had to have um, reloaded your manual save because you basically he needs to be going left towards the exit all the time rather than going backwards. So, again, if at any point you went back to the right, use your uh, just reload your manual save and try again. Again, that one may take two or three attempts. Something like that for me, it was that second room that kept pissing me off. But hopefully you'll get that first time and we can move on. So, oh, Jesus Christ. So we had to talk and spoken to Shay's mommy, which we did. Uh, we just bin this cutscene. We don't need this one. A couple of cutscenes coming up immediately. Um, so yeah, you should have got the no retreat achievement. Now what we're going to do is speak to Shay's mummy. Her mimi. Okay. Yeah, we go then. So speak to old roundhead. And then just choose all of the conversation options. Uh, which is not very much. But what this does and what this will give us is that kind of thing can be pretty convincing full stop achievement. So just waiting for it to unlock here. Which I always wait for it to unlock just in case you go too far and it ends up messing up. Which it... Which one achievement actually did for me. And I'll tell you which one when we get there. So what we're going to do is leave the control room. And we're going to enter the door to the right in the kitchen. Ah, oh, hello, Hexy pal. You look happy now. Don't know why we couldn't have just picked him up and brought him here ourselves. But there we go. Oh, actually, because we're supposed to be being held prisoner. That's right. So we need to pick up inflatable Shea. Now, there was... Uh, we were supposed to do just a little uh, bit of messing around in this kitchen um before i mean it just saved a couple of seconds but i i 
I end up coming back to it a bit later. So don't panic just yet. So pick up inflatable shade. We're going to leave the kitchen. And we're going to make our way to the right. And we're going to go into the right corridor. Which is the blue one on the right hand side. So again just double tap the... Um, a button there to just get through things a little bit quicker, which we're going to be using for the speed run. Enter the first door there, the avalanche ice cream room. And then what we're going to do is use the whipped cream gun on the right to inflate to the inflatable shade. So we're going to stick... What we're going to do is stick a whole bunch of cream inside a doll. Now, make of that what you will, but um, well, I've seen enough documentaries on it to be hilariously grossed out by it. So, inflatable shade, put it on the whipped cream gun. <laughs> there we go. So, he is nice and inflated, full of your creamy goodness. Uh, <laughs> and now we're going to put the cloud shoes back on Vela. Yes, yes, that's what you do. And now we're going to climb up the mountain to pick up the truck, or to the pickup truck, sorry. And we're going to use the helmet on the pickup truck to get a bowl of eat cream. That is what my two-year-old daughter uh, calls ice cream. Eat cream. Because her toddlers are just hilarious at speaking, and they. Uh, so just head up all the way to the top again. Use the helmet on the bowl of uh, on, on the truck to get a nice bowl of ice cream, and then we can leave the room. I will have some ice cream. Thank you. Oh man, that whipped cream sludge ate my cloud shoes. And so when we get back out of this room, we're going to go down past the obstacle. But very important, we're going to move the obstacle back again. This is very important for later on. Because we basically need to do a cheeky little running race. And this helps a big time. So make sure that obstruction is moved back. And then we can just exit the corridor into the hallway. All the way to the right through this single door. And we're going to enter the mission room right here. Which is directly where Vela is. So this one. This is the runaway train mission. So, get your tiny little bup, bups in there. And then what we're going to do, we're gonna, just going to give the inflatable she to the conductor. Because you can speak to her, and they're just going to tell you the same crap. Uh, it's not very interesting. So, we're going to give the train conductor inflatable she. Remember, it's full of your creamy goodness, so they're going to love that even more. Um, <laughs> right, so basically, we're going to take the runaway train mission. Now, you, again, you can keep banging out the dialogue. <laughs> the bridge is fixed <laughs> this time, so there's no way we can uh, go down and die. Basically, there's going to be a little bit... Uh, there it is. So, make sure to choose, yeah, let's do the wave. Let's do the wave. And then, after this bit, we're going to be left with a pile of yarn and be kicked out of the room. I.e. banned. <laughs> so, well, uh, <laughs> banned for life, sorry. Not even banned. Banned for life. <laughs> Which is probably, if you've done that, then you've done something right in life. If you've been banned from somewhere, you've done life pretty good. Right, so we've been kicked out of the room. We're going to take the teleporter, the teleporter hub. And then what we're going to do is wake up the central teleporter. Well, it took you a while to get your ego deflated, didn't it, you big head? But we're going to use the middle um, teleporter to go through back to the orb room. It's so nice to de risk people. Miss you already. Caution. Entering an area of strong. On the run, on the run, on the run. On the run, on the run. Yikes! What the? Thank you. Goodbye. Ooh, unlucky Vela. I almost got your head caved in there, girl. So, we're going to walk down to the bottom of the room, and we're going to use the bowl of ice cream, the bowl of ice cream on the fusion orb to create our bomb. Again, just like Shay earlier, you may have to do this one twice. Um, sometimes it doesn't work, like now it didn't work, so if it doesn't work, just use the bowl of ice cream again. And then we can now leave the orb room, and we're going to return back to the kitchen. So to do that, remember, when we're in the three teleporter rooms, uh, just go all the way to the left, through the fake control room, and that way. That's how you get there. Hey there. Oh, you want to go back? Let's see if this works. Bye-bye.
Oh, in fact, actually, I, I missed the, the, the kitchen this time. So I skipped the kitchen this time. Uh, we're just going to go um, back into the central console. Um, into the real control room. Sorry, your mum. Now we're going to use the central console. Basically, this uh, we're doing what we didn't do earlier. Um, and that was to change a few things in the kitchen and get the cereal out. So... Uh, go back into the kitchen, so apologies I missed that bit out earlier, but again, it just takes a couple of seconds, it's about the same time anyway, so, back into the kitchen, back to the screen where it says Tackle Peel Tuesday, we need to see it, we need to see it say good morning, and then when you drop the boom arm, a bit of cereal's gonna, ha um, thing, and then this big hoover is gonna piss off, what we need to do now is lower that boom arm again, and then press the pause button when it gets at its lowest point, so about there, um, I didn't, well, that, that was a bit short, to be honest, so we'll try again. So, pause it, and make sure that it's, you know, in touching distance, um, and then we can just move on. So, basically, what we have to do is race that big hoover to the point, um, to get back to the hallway in order to get hit, uh, to, in order to get some stuff off him, in order to not drop the chute. Uh, again, it'll all just make sense in a second, though. So, what we're going to do is, after we've done that, we're going to go back... By just pressing the cross button there at the top right hand corner of the screen. And now we're going to go back into the kitchen. So again, apologies. That bit was a bit confusing. I ended up missing that step earlier. Which was a bit dongish of me as it were. So. make it, We're going to make a manual save. It's not very important to make a manual save. But it's just in case you um, end up not beating him. And then you just have to go back to the kitchen. It's just easier to make a manual save. And then if you don't beat him. You can just reload your save. It's a lot easier. So click on the serial. And then you're going to get the cutscene where the hoover's gone. So the hoover's now gone, so we need to go back out. We need to go immediately to the right. We need to go to the left side room, which is the teleporter room. And then we need to take the very right teleporter hub. Now this is why we moved the obstacle back earlier, because the hoover got distracted by the obstacle. Now as soon as we get out of here, just keep spamming the A button on the hoover. Keep spamming it on the hoover. And there we go. So just keep spamming the A button. Now, I, you could see I tried putting the ice cream down, but that didn't work. You have to keep spamming the A button there. And as long as you get this cutscene and a bit of dry moldy cereal at us, well, goddamn, man, we good. And now we can put the ice cream <laughs> the ice cream bomb down the trash chute. Again, that's why we had to beat him, because you can't actually open this trash chute without, um, without the hoover. I wanted to put something down it, so you can't open it manually. So, with that, we should get the Holy Smokes achievement as well. There she blows. And now we're going to take the teleporter back to the teleporter hub. And take the left teleporter to the left teleporter, 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 teleporter. I've had enough of saying the word freaking teleporter. Uh, but take the left one and we go into the trophy room. And then when we get here then, we can crawl through the vent on the other side of the room to get to Marek's hideout. Now, this is where... Um, I got a bit too fast and the achievement bugged out for me. Now, what you're supposed to do is pick specific dialogue and then the achievement greetings from obvious town will unlock. So interact with the panel there. But what I ended up doing was just spamming through all the dialogue because it does literally doesn't matter. So exhaust all the dialogue options and then use the serial with the two maids and then when that's happening, pick up the hook from underneath the door and you should now have the hook. Um, so, it does take a while for it to unlock here as well, but eventually it does. Um, so originally, all I was choosing was Mog Trothra, The Maiden's Feast, and hey, I've got some cereal here. And the achievement was not unlocking, so I exhausted all the dialogue options. And for some reason, even though, like I said, as you can see here, it does take a while for it to unlock. Um, ex just exhausting all the dialogue options is the one that seemed to work for me. Um... For getting the greetings from obvious town friends. Uh, greetings from obvious town. Um, otherwise what you can do is just. I mean eventually it unlocks. So you just got to click on the wire. And the cutscene will happen. And we'll end up back in the teleporter room. So I don't know what it is with that achievement. I don't know why it was so buggy. I don't know why it took ages to unlock. But again that's the way i done it. So hopefully it works for you as well. <clears throat> okay right what we're doing. Going back through the teleporter. 
And then we're going to take the teleporter back to the teleporter hub. And we're going to go to the left. We're basically going to go all the way left now to Shay's room and climb through Shay's vent. So here we are, welcome back to Marekio's hideout. Now we're going to make our way across the room, we're going to use the Compiopner. And this is basically going to lock the door so Marek can leave his hideout. So from the left, pick up the star chart from the side of the computer, that one right there. This is, is, like, is Vela supposed to be like a bug or something? I don't know, what the hell is that supposed to be for a hat thing? Um, <laughs> so Marek, for some reason, who's turned from a fox wolf into a big chunky alien headed douchebag uh, we can just go back to the right and we need to um, uh, go back to Shay's room so now let's head back to the fake control room which is of course to the right of this particular room right meow uh, we're not actually in fact we are coming up to the very end now so we've only got the finale to do and then it's the big bad boy speed run so head through the red door underneath the console commands there and everything, which is the Space Weaver's room. Now, I mean, he's had a hell of a hangover for a couple of days. What we need to do, we need to... Apparently, we need to go down, which we don't need to do. Sorry, got a bit ahead of myself there. We need to open up our inventory and combine the fork with the yarn. So the fork we got from the salad from the real control room with Mommy. And the yarn we got from the runaway train room mission. So pop that one together, and then what we need to do is stick the fork so far inside the Space Weaver that he does not know what day of the week it is, and he's going to have to be hospitalized. But of course, don't do that to anyone in real life, by the way. That's just, you know, this is just what we've got to do now. It is it is what it is. So stick the fork inside him. And what we have to do is basically get away from Laruna, the planet that we're on now. Or the <coughs> quote-unquote planet. Um... So, what we have to do, we need a pattern that is gained during Shay's part of Act 2, when Alex plays the flute. So, this is where Alex's flute comes into. So, give the Space Weaver the star chart. Now, what we have to do, this should be exactly the same every time. So, use the cr cr crochet hook, and then choose the, in the middle of the row, choose the second option, and the top row, choose the top, uh, choose the middle option again. So, this is exactly what it should look like. The three are already there, it's just the two extra ones that we added, so remember it was mid, mid, low, high, mid, and as soon as we've got it like that, just press the B button to back out, and um, that should be good, that should be good. So I think what we're going to get, yes, so now you should get an achievement called Go With Your Instincts, there it is, so that's all you had to do for that one, press B to back out, couple of cutscenes, job done. So... Now we can, um, in fact, no, we're done here. We can just go to the left, um, where she's mommy's gonna have a little, little bump into us. Whoops, sorry, hon. And now we're gonna go to the left again, and we're gonna go into the real control room. So past the kitchen here, and then into the real control room, and that is that. So this is it for Act Two. Now we've just got the finale to do, which should not take. It doesn't take too long, I think, after we do everything, and we do have to do more hexipal wiring, unfortunately, if you're really pissed off with it. Um, but it's going to take around 30 minutes or so to do this finale before we can move on with the speed run. I can't believe that worked. I can. Well, I couldn't patch everything, but the main living areas should hold together now. Well then, that means this ship is ready to fly to Laruna. Now, you'll unlock the achievement for completing Act 2. Now, what you're supposed to do is um, pick the right Chogmothra spaceship. Mog Chothra, whatever the frick it is. But we need to be choosing the right one, which is where um, Hope and Vela are. 
Uh, it do doesn't matter if you choose the left one. We can just press the white button there to go back into the infantry and go back to Vela. We're going to start off with her. So the left one has she and his family, etc. Or Vela's family and whatever. So what we're going to do is just go back and we're going to go back to the left anyway. We're going to go back to the left ship. So make sure to choose a Vela. There we go. So again, quite a couple of things we've got to do. But it's not too, not too randy dandy, maybe. It's not. It's not, I swear to God. I swear to God. Right, so go down. Out of the real control room, and we're going to head... Um, we need to leave the real control room and head along the left corridor to the right. And basically, we need to now choose the Hexipal. Now, what we have to do... This is another part that we have to do, um, which I will show you a bit later. But basically, when you have a look at the back of the Hexipal, there are little... Burn marks with tiny little colours, the blue, the red and the yellow. So it's a bit easier than the first time we had to do it with Shea. Um, but basically we just have to um, write down, again it's worth writing down exactly where it is because we have to use it for Shea a little bit later on. So coming into this room, using the detonator there on the other spaceship. And... Uh, Alex panics, blah blah blah, we've got the cutscene done, so now what we're going to do is open our inventory and we're going to switch to Shay again. Oh, we got a bit of back and forth in this boy. In fact, sorry, no, we're going back to the room. <laughs> apologies, apologies, we're going back to the real control room first. So head to the left, and head back into the real control room, and now we're going to open our inventory and switch to Shay. So, you know, close enough, close enough. We're getting blown to bits, that's my idea of a good time. Unless it's literally, not figuratively, figuratively. Right, so now we are back as Shay. And we've had the uh, cutscene with Alex. If Alex isn't here, um, just go into the right room and then come back. Because we are having to speak to Alex. And really just ask him, like, how did he manage to get a forehead that size? It's it's incredible. Um, <laughs> no. Um, so I thought he was going to be in the music room or something. But all you got to do then, if Alex isn't there, just go back out of the room. And go back up the ladder. Alrighty, Roo. And there he is. So there's old eight head right there. I mean, that's a hell of a thumb head, to be fair, as well. So she's basically going to insist that Vela's using the death ray for a reason. And then what that's going to do is unlock the achievement. She must have a reason. So she's already starting to get the honkity donk donks for Vela by the looks of things. So there's the achievement then. Again, having to wait just a couple of seconds, annoyingly, to, to get that one up. But as soon as we've done that, um, we're going to use open our inventory and we're going to use grabbing Gary's remote. And now we're going to see another cutscene where Shay's mom switches the boom arms from manual to automatic. So that, that so the ship's going to let go of this one. But after this cutscene, we're going to open our inventory and basically switch back to Velarella Rella Ding Dong Ding. Rats! My mom must have set the boom on. Hello? There are no ship shields. We threw Okay, let's choose some dialogue options now to get the next achievement. And the first one is my friend Alex is flying that other ship. It came from Shellmoun, which is the top option. Now choose why don't you want our ship grabbing the other ship, which is the second option again. Why don't you want our ship grabbing? And then choose Shay! was in Shell Mound when I saw him, because Shay's in capital letters for some reason. And then, but but what if it's Shay who's controlling the arms? Dun, dun, dun. And then choose, can't you go around them? So, top option, can't you go around them? Now choose, do you think the other ship has the same navigation problem? And you get the achievement for, he must have a reason as well, by the way. So, do you think the other ship... And then choose, can we just push them out of the way? And then choose, for the last one, maybe you should get off the ship. It's me they want. So, there you go. So, you should already have the he must have a reason achievement. And, right, now we're good to go. We're going to leave this real control room. We're going to enter Shay's room. And we're going back down into Marek's hub once again. Come on in, Clyde. Welcome, welcome. 
So we're going all the way to the left. We're going to pick up a piece of wire that is sending on Mariex Compiopner. The old Compiop of life. So pick that up and that's going to trigger a conversation with the boss. We're just going to exhaust all the conversation options. And we, we should then receive the achievement. We talked that fight right out of you. But just exhaust every little thing. So you just need... Sounds like you want to put me... Why did you use the boy? Because even our wisest... So, what will happen to Shay? He was going to return to the Why do you pretend he's ship? Your system is gross. What? If you're so weak and fragile, please, excuse me. I need... And there she blows, boss! Another achievement. So what we're going to do now is open our inventory. We're going to combine the wire and the hexi panel. This is what I mean by the burns. If you want to keep looking at it, just um, be my guest. But I would write it down. So as you can see, for me, it's the... Make sure you're looking at the blue uh, or the, the scorched marks. Write down then from blue and which direction it's going. The yellow, which direction it's going from the scorched marks. And the red one, um, in which direction it's going from the scorch marks. So, that is what you need to be doing for the puzzle later on. Again, remember, it's from the left side to the right side. So, from the scorch marks, down. So remember, for me, as you can see there, it's blue at, at 12 o'clock, down to uh, or 1 till 3. Honestly, I was getting confused with the yellow and red because they're quite... I'm not the best with colours as it is anyway. Um, so... For some reason, the yellow and red, I kept getting messed up and mashed behind. So, uh, if you're better at colours than me, then that would be fantastic. But what that is exactly what's supposed to happen. Again, that's all going to be random for you. It's an easier one than the last one. But as long as you've done that puzzle right, that is what Vela should say. Oh, this old girl I know. And then Flashy McFlash Flash should flash his flash. If you get it wrong, basically his eyes just blink um, into X's and O's. And you just got to do it again. So, <laughs> right, going on, we're going to the right, and then we're going to go back into the fake control room again. We're basically going through the red door back to the Space Weaver's room now. So there it is, back into the red room, back into the Space Re Reamer's room. Reamer's? Creamer. Mr. Reamer Creamer. Right, nothing we can do for now. So, let's... <laughs> to open, I'm too old for this shit. Switch back to Shay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the door on the right-hand side, so we're going back down. Now, this is another puzzle, but this should always be the exact same. As you can see, this should always be the exact same. Now, remember what you should have drawn down earlier. You should have drawn down all the markings earlier. Um, again, because it's all going to be random in terms of that, but in terms of this piece of paper or whatever right here, this bit should always be the same. So what you have to do is just look at what you uh, wrote down earlier, where you mark the shapes, and then you just need to basically connect the dots again. So from wherever your triangle to um, middle triangle is, and then sort of half triangle to up and down arrow, and then coloured in full triangle to up and down arrow again. So again, it's going to be dif different for me on screen. It's going to be different for you. So as long as you wrote down all the shapes and where they were earlier, you should have not but a clue, uh, not but the problem with it. <laughs> you should have a clue. But you shouldn't have a problem with it later on. Right, mate. So let's go after the going through the left door and getting the cutscene. We're going to go back through the right door. There is going to be a radio for us to pick up. So pick that one up. It's a lot of dancing and a lot of hard, a lot of hardcore schnit going to go down right now. So back out of the music room, and then we are going to climb back up the ladder to the control room. It's a lot more back and forth and Bioshock collectibles, to be honest. So we're going to show the broken radio to the hexy pal on the bottom left-hand corner that is dancing with Rakaki, Rick Rocky. Hexy pal is basically going to fix the radio, and he's going to get inside of Shay. Yes, he is definitely getting inside a Shea in his pocket, of course. <laughs> so, give the radio to uh, 6,000 head Alex, the old nine head. And his eyebrows look incredible as well. And what's with everyone's whiskey nose in the game? Anyway, we're going back through the door behind Alex, and we're going to climb down the ladder again. This time, we're going to head through the door on our left. 
Uh, but basically our path is going to be blocked by a group of four rogue hexy pals. What he could do is literally just throw something at them and then throw them off the side. That would have been easier, but that's not what this game wants. So, we need to show the hexy pal to the group. So again, put them in your inventory and then just use them on the rogue hexy pals. And then what they're going to do is now follow us. So we're going to head back into El Musical Rumorini. And when we get here, what we're going to do is just run, run! Nah, you can't run, sadly. These little things, they, I mean, they look friggin' dangerous. But walk up to the harp, so all four are in the room. And we're going to use the Hexy Pal, which is in our butt pocket. Or, yeah, just our butt pocket, not our butt. Don't know what the hell you're going to be fitting up there. Yeah, that's mega talent if you're going to fit a hexy pal up your butt. Uh, but you're going to use the hexy pal with the harp. Um, now, it's not actually the correct solution for the puzzle. This is not how you're supposed to do this one. But it does cause the rogue hexy pals to start dancing. And it unlocks the achievement, the next most logical course of action. So, again, not the right way to do it. But it is the quickest. So, Sigma. So what we need to do now is inspect the back of the hexy pal and rewire it so it matches the... Uh, well, it, I'll tell you the following combination. Because what we're going to have to do is go back upstairs to the control room. And it's going to be this one particular puzzle. This, now, this should always be the same. When we go over to the right on the charging station now, we're going to put the hexy pal on. And as you can see, now this is exactly what... So if you want to take a picture or pause the video here, that's fine. But you just need to have a look at your sheet, again, where you've put the shapes. And you need it so it matches this exact shape. So the two arrows and the two arrows left and right and the two arrows up and down uh, match those two up. And then the two arrows left and right to the three diamonds. And then the two arrows left and right to the coloured in triangle again. Don't worry about the colour, it's not about the colours, it's about matching up the correct symbols. So, again, whip out your paper. You should, hopefully, you should have drawn down, or your Microsoft Paint, but you should have drawn down exactly where all these shapes are, what point they were at. So, again, for me, it'll be 6, uh, point 6 to point 3, or bloody whatever the hell. Um, but as long as you've got this exact equation down, then that is what will get us the eh, 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 eh. Achievement, which is basically the Hexapal performing Raz's victory dance from Psychonauts, which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. A bit of a pain in the ass if you still don't know what we're doing particularly. But there we go. So it should be fine. So again, as long as you're looking at your shapes and you've and you've done it um, exactly the way that it was on the puzzle just now. So as you can see, the blue one for me was from 1 to 2. The second one was from 1 to 5, and then the third one was from 1 to 3. And as soon as you, assuming you've done it correctly, you should get this cutscene, Raz's Victory Dance Song, again, which is incredibly cool and very funny. Uh, but that'll get you the... <laughs> Achievement. Yeah, I went a bit overboard there. So, for the next one, what you have to do, remember the harp, um, the wire harp that we found downstairs. Now, what you have to do, remember, you have to, um, again, take a look at your sheet, but you have to, sheet, but you have to interact with the full-on triangle into the um, sort of half triangle, or the, the, the barely drawn triangle. The second row is the barely tr drawn triangle into the up and down arrow. And then for the third row, it's the fully fully coloured in triangle into the up and down arrow. Um, so I, I thought... So I, well, I, as it turns out, I, I balls that one up. Um, so yeah, apologies, I didn't actually put a picture up here. So in fact, I do end up going back downstairs. So that's why I haven't got a frigging clue what's going on. So that's what happens. So there we go. So again, it's <laughs> instead of me... <laughs> Instead of me explaining it, it's probably easier to just come down here and have a look. So, again, make sure that, obviously, your starting point is on your left, your finishing point is on your right. So, again, make sure to um, pause the video there or take a picture on your phone or whatever, whatever's easier for you, and just match up all the symbols correctly. Hopefully, you've got to a point now where you're sort of used to it, which, again, is going to come in handy because we need to do this bit for the big speed run, and then we can finally move on.
So for me, this time it was from point three to point six, which of course was the um, coloured in triangle to the sort of half coloured, barely coloured in triangle. From point six to point two, and then from point three to point two, that was it for me. Uh, but hopefully, again, all you all you've done is easily matched up your shapes, and we can just move on. So from here, head into the right hand side when you've um, got the harp one all set up. Um, and then we're going to use the hexipal with the harp. Now we have to do this, and we have to wire them up correctly so we can actually play the harp. Now what that'll do is distract the rogue harps, uh, the rogue uh, little diamond douchebags, and then we can move on without being followed. So move out of the music room and go to the left room. Now what we can do is inspect the switch on the wall, but instead of a switch, what we're going to find is an old mullet. You know, one of those, uh, um, no, not mullet, sorry, mallet. <laughs> of course. Uh, follow the path round, past the switch, onto the other side where Shay's going to find the proper switch, and just click it once to turn it back on. But just be wary, by the way. If we don't find a way to distract Alex, uh, basically, as soon as Vela uses the death ray again, Alex will shut down the power once more. But if you're following the video, that won't happen. So, again, shouldn't panic your butt sacks about it. So go back into the music room again. <laughs> we need to get our hexy pal back. So that's some good stuff that we just messed up in there, dear. Yeah, um, now we all we need to do is we just need to rewire him once more. So remember the pattern that we done in order to repair Vela's hexy pal. Now this is the actual pattern that you need to use for Shay's hexy pal. So. Um, Again, at this point, if you have forgotten or you didn't end up writing it down, you can just go back onto Vela, go back into her inventory, and then take a look at it as it is. And it should be exactly the same. So, from where all the scorch marks were on Vela, it'll be the exact same for us. So, <coughs> excuse me. God damn, it's a, it's a long-ass commentary. So, we should have the hexy pal. So, as you can see there, you should now just copy the exact same as it is here. So blue from one to, and again, I would highly recommend just writing it down so you don't have to keep doing this. So blue for me, of course, it's going to be completely different for you. Um, yeah, there we go. So obviously blue was from one to three. Yellow was from um, two to five. And then red was from six to four. And the reason it was taking me so long, I was getting confused with my reds and yellows. The yellow looked like a red, and the red kind of looked like a yellow for some reason. Uh, but again, I, I would highly recommend just drawing everything down and writing every pattern down just so it makes your life a crap load easier. So remember then, for me, anyway, it was blue, 1 to 3, yellow, 2 to 5, and then red, 6 to 3. So that is what it should look like, or it should look exactly the same as it as it is for you from Vela's screen. And then what you need to do is combine the Hexy Pal with the Mallet. And basically, we are coming up to the end of the game now. We're literally at the end of the game. Um, so we need to combine the Hexy Pal with the Mallet. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, give him the Mallet before getting him to play the drums. Otherwise, he's just going to look like he's... Literally tossing off an imaginary drum wiener. Um, <laughs> what? So, <laughs> as long as the he uh, Hexy Pal has got the mallet, there's going to be a cutscene and Alex is going to be like, Eh, give me my Hexy Pal, wee! And uh, for some reason, Alex, who has the forehead strength the size of an absolute bear, can't even take a little mallet off a little Hexy Pal, which is hilarious. So, when this is happening then, and everyone's distracted, move out to the left, out of the noisy room. And uh, we're going to go back into the control room, but there's nothing else that we can do right now. So we're going to switch back to Vela once more. And what we have to do is do some distracting in as well. So from here, what we're going to do is climb down the old Space Weaver Beard Legend Weaver. We're going to rewire the Hexipal again so that it is playing the harp tune. So, so again, sorry, I forgot we have to do this. So, remember from earlier on, it was the, um, in the middle room between the left room and the music room, it's the harp song that we have to play, uh, the harp tune that we have to play again. So, um, again, hopefully, 
if you've forgotten it, just get it up on Google or something, you know, bro Broken Age, um, Hexipal, uh, Harper Tune, uh, unless of course you write that one down as well, which would always come in handy, um, so, so yeah, if you write it down, it'll obviously be a lot easier and a lot handier, um, but if not, just type it in on Google and just to see exactly what the pattern is like on that uh, piece of paper that we've seen. But as long as you've got that, Vera will say, that's evocative. That's a very posh word for such a big head. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that's going to do with anything, but we need to use the Hexipal now with the Star Weaver's Tapestry. What that's going to do is actually make the Star Weaver laugh uncontrollably. He's going to lose his schnip balls. And now what we can do is just go back up the ladder. We're going to leave the room through the door. So we can finally leave the Hexipal. Man, the wiring of these Hexipals genuinely pissed me off the first time. But we're going to go through the left. We're going to almost collide with um, a round burger head. And then what we're going to do now, we can quickly hurry to the real control room. Yes, the real control room. So head left. Past the kitchen. And again, we are literally, we, I tell you what, we are literally at the end of the game now. So, life is, should be golden. And then just use the ship's control to set the boom arms back to manual control. You should just click on it once and it should just go, uh, just do it automatically. And then we're going to walk back out now to the fake control room. It's all, oh, it's all kicking off, man. And all this because somebody designed our ship's real alien space ugly like. Tap in, mate. Now, we can just use the detonator and watch the following cutscene. So, use the death ray detonator. Use it on the Chog Mothra. Mark Chothra. Bloody top ding. And we're just going to go uh, enjoy the cutscene. Or not. We can just carry on as we've been doing for the rest of it. And all we've got to do now is use uh, go back to Shay. Use the Grab and Gary remote. And that is what will end the trigger the end cutscene. So, we are now at the... the uh, Final, the finality of the game. I'm making up all types of words in my apparent native English speaking language right there. Uh, but using the Grab and Gary mode, that triggers the end cutscene. Here is the end cutscene. I again, I've edited it out. Um, it's a happy ending. So if you want to know that, it's a happy ending. Uh, so if you want to watch it, be my guest. But I have edited it out. But this is basically the end of the game. And now, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Come on, you need to get yourself back cracked and. You know, snack watched and all types of crap. Get your balls waxed, get your back cracked, because this is speedrun time, baby! So, uh, yeah, it's going to be more of a serious um, next hour or so. Only because, of course, we need to be getting through a lot. We have to be getting through a lot, and we have to get through it quickly. Um, so I'm not going to be... Telling that many jokes, we're not going to be pissing around as much. We're just going to get on with it, smash it square at the butt, and job's done. Um, but what I will tell you, a couple of things um, I will tell you. So, we have to get this game done in under an hour, but that only includes the time while you're playing. So, the loading times, and if you pause the game, they don't count. It's only when you're playing the game. So, if you're stuck in a puzzle, or you can't remember where you need to go next, um, just pause the game to read... Uh, to read anything or just watch the video a bit further on and you should be fine you won't be penalized what i do after every couple of scenes i make a manual save so if if i do a couple of items or get through to another couple of rooms see two or three rooms i always make a manual save and i keep because basically you've got seven opportunities there so i just make a manual save do another couple of things make another manual save in the next box so, just in case we've forgotten something and we end up messing up, you've then got at least, you know, depends on how much you got, but we've then got at least uh, 10 minutes where you can go back if you've made a mistake or you've messed something up. So, that is one of my biggest things. That's what helped me a lot. Uh, just keep making frequent manual saves in each individual box, um, and you should be okay. Um, what we're going to do, we're not going to click on any items that we don't need to. We're just going to smash through it. We don't need to be wasting our time interacting with certain objects and certain dialogues. We're just going to keep on smashing that we can um, get through. There are only a couple of occasions that some cutscenes and conversations can't be skipped. I'll let you know when we get there. Um, 
Also, we're just going to be spamming the B button this time. So we're going to be spamming the B button and skipping all dialogue and cutscenes. So if you listen and watch everything, you're not going to make it in under an hour. So continuously spam the B button to skip all dialogue and cutscenes quickly as we can as well. And also, while travelling from location to location, remember I, I said a couple of times in the last uh, in the main sort of game, when you see the double arrow, um, when you go into et new doors, etc., double tap the A button, and then you actually, again, you just go straight into that room rather than watch us go straight in. So, that is the best thing, you know, those, those are the tips I can give you. So, just keep tapping the double A button to go into new rooms. Um, spam the B button there to... Um, Smash through all dialogue and cutscenes, and we're not going to waste our times with absolutely anything. So we're looking at, I wrote this down as well, but we're looking at around 8 to 12 minutes to get Act 1 Shay done. 9 to 13 minutes to get Vela's Act 1 done. 9 to 13 minutes again to get Shay's Act 2 done. 12 to 15 minutes to get Vela's Act 2 done, and the finale about 4 to 5 minutes, which, depending on how quick you do it, can get you anywhere between 42 to 58 minutes, so I just um, write it down. So, immediately straight away, get pick up the spoon from the cereal, say yes, and then just eat the spoon. Again, smash the uh, smash the cutscene, and then just choose, we, need, um, we have to defend the friendship circle. And just immediately click on old um, ball bag head right here. The old dill head. Again, smash the, smash the B button. And smash the B button again. And go to this bit. Next, we're going to choose better suit up and investigate that foreign body. Again, apologies that we're going quite quick, but we have to. So, spam the B button. Keep spamming the A button until you get all the way over to the right-hand side. <laughs> there it is. Right there, that one is. Again, press the B button. Press the B button again. Now choose, let's catch that runaway train. And again, just keep um, spamming the B button until we get here. Um, open up the sleeping bridge man's wide ass broccoli tongue. Or celery tongue, whatever the hell that is. And uh, annoyingly, we do have to wait for a couple of seconds right here. And as soon as he jumps down, get off the sleeping bridge man and then we can fall down. Now again, remember, every couple of scenes, every couple of things we do, make a manual save. I can't tell you how important that is for later on. So, spam the B button. We're going to grab the compressed uh, fart jar, which is by the Until Further Notice sign there. And now we're going to, to open up the grabbing Gary. So, open up that one. And then we're just going to walk to the right. We're going to use the screwdriver with the vent. Make sure to and then we're going to pick up the inflatable shea, and we are going to um, use the compressed fart jar with the inflatable shea, and that should be good. Now we can walk to the left, use the inflatable shea on the bed, and then we can go back to the right and go back into the vent. Right. So again, remember, just keep making little manual saves. Don't worry about talking to Marek, go straight left into the vent this time. And then use the sp star chart with the space weaver. Thanks very much, pal. Much appreciated. Goodbye. We're going back to the right. So go back to the right. Again, remember we have to be um, playing this game. You know, this grabbing game. So um, pick with Marek. Again, if you want to make a manual save here, you're more than welcome to. Otherwise, you can just immediately get the boom arm out. And... Um, uh, excuse me. And then use it to pick up the teddy. Of course... There's no achievement. Um, I didn't bother making any manual saves for... Uh, only for the last couple, I made a couple of manual saves for. Um, that, and that was more of a just-in-case I did take too long. But I do end up missing a few. But it takes seconds, so don't panic your bums off about it. So there's the first two done. Now what we're going to do is go to the left again. And go back through the vent. And then we're going to give the next star chart to the legendary mustachioed space weaver. Elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> yeah. So, back into the rent, back into the vent on the right, is what I meant to say. And then again, spamming the D, uh, B button to get, to get through the cutscene and dialogue. Open up the boom arm and then just pick up this uh, fat, love-hearted Teddy McBear. And then press up and then left. And again, just um, get the boom arm, grab this one. Again, it doesn't matter if you miss, uh, but just try not to miss too many times, as it, uh, again, obviously adds unnecessary time. So press up, twice on the old arrow, Obini. Get this fat little Jigglypuff thing. Alrighty, Macroni, and then press right. 
and then press right, and then press up, and then press the boom arm, so it should be fine. Yeah, should be fine. So that one's all good. Press B button to skip through the cutscene again and just go immediately down and down again. And then just again, uh, make sure that you've got the target and you are good as golden nuggets to go. So once again, spam B, spam B, spam B, spam B, spam, 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 spam. And then we're going to eventually end up out of our bed and now we can just move on. So walk all the way to the right and we're heading out of the door. Oh, in fact, no, we're not heading out of the door. We're going to go and see Big Marek, the Big Charek. So, go to Big Marek. Okay, so just a couple that we're going to speak to Marek about. The first one, choose how we're going to take control of the ship's cargo boom arm. And then the distress call was from Prima... Oh, how we're going to take down the shields. And then the, the distress call was from Prima Doom. And then we can choose, I better get back to the mission. So, again, apologies, it's a bit quick, but we need to fly. Fly, fly. So, go left and go left again. And then this time, we are going to go left into the fake control room. And then into the kitchen. Pick up the knife. Angry looking knife. Why are your knives always so angry looking? And then go back out. And then go to the right, through the right hand door again. Right, go right, 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 right. Watch out for that right tree. Uh, go through to the left, a green room, into the teleporter room. Go into the trophy room. Again, just keep spamming B as quickly, A and B as quickly as you can on everything that you can. And then pick up the hazard baby radiation suit type thing right there. And then go through to the right hand side vent. Job done. Right, now just keep going all the way to the right, ignoring everything in this room. There's nothing there actually. As you keep spamming it out, go through to the left, side, left hand side vent this time. And through the left door again. And then this time, we're going to go through the teleporter room again. So the green room again. Keep tap, double tapping the A every time you get into a new area. And then go through the right room this time. Again, so every new area, just keep tapping the double A button so you can get there immediately rather than watching this walk. And then go through, uh, go down to the left. Oops, a bit too much. So go to the left into the next room here and go through this smiley double door room. Right, just interact with ball bag dildo head again. He's got a crochet hook in his back. Now, how the hell have you managed that, boy? No wonder your friggin' back's hurting, bruh. So, hey, choose, hey, maybe I can fix your back. And then, well, I gotta go. And he gives us the crochet hook. So now we can back out into the next area. We can go to the left. And we're going into the avalanche ice cream room. The deliciousness room. So, interact with the cold cream gun. And get the whipped cream gun. As soon as you do that, get back out of there and go to the left. And then go back into the teleporter room. And then we're going to go into the central room this time. So we're going into the orb room once more. Right from here, immediately go to your left. Or put on your um, space helmet. Sorry. So put on your space helmet first. And then go to the left hand side. You can do it here, or you can do it in the next room. It does make a difference, but we need to put it on anyway. And now just um, interact with the bottom of the screen. And now put the headphones, the Omicron inhibitors, on the orb. Again, if it doesn't work the first time, try it again. But make sure the headphone thing looking things are on. And then go to the right. Run, Shay, run, you square-headed diamond monkey. Right, teleporter. Back in. Get the flub on out of here, man. Ow, ow, my head's back to normal. <laughs> right, go to the right teleporter. <laughs> no malfunction, no erection, no malfunction. Oh, sorry, I did say I wouldn't. Right, now we can go to the right-hand side, through the right-hand side door. And then we can just head all the way down to the airlock. There we go, and then remember what we have to do. Um, use the far jar on your head, use the whipped cream gun on you as well. And then use the knife on the... Uh, hose so we can get up remember it's either holding the A button or tap double uh, you know just keep tapping the A button keep tapping the A button you feel like you're in a bit more of a control so just go up and then just immediately to the left so we can go straight to the control hatch no pissing about we are going to interact the knife with the control hatch and then use grabbing Gary on the control hatch remember so with that one done just go to the right as we look again like the 1950s clown <laughs> 1950s circus clown of life and then go right, 
soon as you get past the space needle, just drop all the way down, and that is job done. Remember, pause in the game doesn't uh, mess around with the timer, so if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed or a bit stuck, just pause the game and have five minutes or so and come back to it. But anyway, back here, we're going back into the next hallway, and then going into the teleporter again. Teleporter. Schmacktmiv. Attractive schmacktiv? Hmm, yes, please. Right, from here, what we're going to do is just go all the way to the left again. So we can go back out into the fake control room. And then from here, we're just going to go all the way around. And we're going to go into the Space Weaver's room, the red room again this time. And with the Space Weaver, we're going to interact with him now. Choose a fine, cozy cluster it is. And then go down the ladder. And then interact the crochet hook with the tapestry. And then choose it in the uh, top left, middle row, and bottom left right there. Or the third one in the bottom row. So that's exactly what that should look like. Then go up and go into the right vent. And of course, remember, again, if you want to make a manual save, hopefully you've been making plenty of manual saves by now. Um, but I would make a manual save for this one because, of course, these were the ones that uh, go... Uh, and as you can see, I've been manual saving quite a bit already. Um, but of course, these are the ones that um, go um, left and right quite quickly. So if you feel like you've wasted a couple of minutes or too much time on it, make a manual save now and then just go back to it. Um, but again, remember my tip, wait until they're sort of both at the right-hand side right there, and then pick it up. So that's the biggest tip I can give for this one. So go up, and then up again, and again, just give it a few seconds. There we go. Make sure they're both at the right-hand side. Job done. Right, we've got one more to do. So go to the right, go to the right, go to the right, go to the down, and then again... It does take a few attempts for me here, but again, I'm not too, I'm not panicking too much uh, because it's only wasting literally a couple of seconds. So, if that's fine, you you can miss it as long as it takes seconds. If it starts taking minutes and you think, oh, this is too long, reload your manual save and go again. Otherwise, we can spam the B button, and that is the end of that one. So, hopefully, you got that one done within eight to twelve minutes for me. I got it done in about 9 minutes, so hopefully you're on about the same ballpark there. Right, as soon as you speak to Vela's sister, make sure to just keep spamming on Vela's sister. Come on, you slow ass bitch. Then we can click immediately on the house after that. Uh, click anywhere in the darkness there to turn on the light. Surprise, yeah, spanks your hairy crutch. And then click on the towel at the forefront of the screen. And then press B, and then pick up a cupcake, press B again, spam through the cutscenes and dialogue. Um, we're going to give the cupcake to Grandpa Bellender right there. And again, choose split it with you. Split it with you. And he's going to go, eh! So uh, pick up the knife. And then uh, just go to the left a little bit. And then give the knife to your mommy. Mommy, I want to slice you. Which is quite disturbing, really. But uh, give her the knife. And then we're going to end up back in this old Mog Chotter part. Um, right, so interact with the girl on the left. The girl on the, the fun size one. The girl on the purple dress. And the girl on the right. And now uh, choose the purple dress. Ask for a drink of water, and again, can I borrow that bottle one more time? Sorry, go very fast at this bit. Give the bottle of water to Fun Size Girl to the left of you, then give her the towel. And then use the corset there on the bird, and then the knife on yourself. And then that's that bit done. So again, apologies that that bit was very, very quick there. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're obviously having to do this quite quickly. So immediately go to the right. This time we're into the bird area. We're going to speak to I'm Mag uh, Mugugi. Hey, now choose what are you doing exactly? How did you get the eggs and the high nests? And then hey, can I borrow your ladder? Hey, borrow ladder? Right, press B to get out of there. Use the ladder on the top right hand nest, and then we're going to pick up the knife. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this shit again, man. Pure Danny Glover style. Right, when that's done, what we're going to do is just go to the left. Keep going all the way to the left. Right, next up, um, go ahead and speak to Coral, where her, where she is in the cloud shoes, old giant giraffe neck right there. Cutscene's going to happen, back out of it quickly, and then back out of that, give her the knife. No, not the ladder, give her the knife, you douchebag. <laughs> there we go. And then put the cloud shoes um, on the ladder. Giant cloud shoes on the ladder, job done. Again, keep pressing the B button to any cutscene dialogue, any little bits like that. Right, go down from this bit, and then we're going to go down the ladder at the forefront of the screen. Go ahead and speak to Twyla, 
Hell of a name. How's it it's actually pretty cool. Choose, I really like your outfit. Then choose, uh, did you say something about shoes? And then press the B button to back out, back out, back out. Put the cloud shoes on yourself. Lovely. Wow, they're not, uh, they're not discussing your chair. Go back up the ladder and then go to the central bit right here. And then go back to the right-hand side, very right-hand side. Again, double tap and A to get everywhere. So back to the rear cloud part. Use the ladder on the nest in front of us to pick up. I get a golden egg. I get a golden egg to make my way. And all that thing. Now we can go back. And then run all the way back. Come on, cloud face. Come on, cloud feet. Come in. And then we're going all the way back to the left again. So as soon as you can, double tap the A button to get through to the left-hand side. Right, now, again, avoid the holes in the cloud. Very important to avoid the holes in the cloud there. But we're going to use the ladder where Big Jesse Bird is. And then, of course, go to the left. We're going back to the James and the Giant Fruit Man. Peach Tree. Again, avoid the giant holes in the clouds. Keep manual saving if you end up going through one of these holes in the cloud and it takes a while. Uh, remember to just reload your manual save. Otherwise, we can go all the way to the back, interact with the branch, and that's going to pop a cheeky peach down. This time... We don't need to be getting two for any achievements, of course. So just go to the right and then go to the top right cloud. This one. This is going to knock, uh, knock Gus's ass off. And we can jo jump down the central tree, go to the left, pick up the peach. Mm, Firm and pungent. <laughs> Love my butt. <laughs> that is my butt. Now we can go all the way to the right to basically pick up Jesse's egg since we got rid of the hippie dwarf. Hippie dwarfs. Oh, hippie dwarves. Right, go back up the tree. Anytime you want to be a bit quicker than that. Yeah, nice. And then we're going to go back out and back to the right. Now, of course, immediately when we get here, give the, um, into your D-pad, uh, into your inventory, give Jessie her egg and pick up the second golden egg and go down the ladder. Arr, arr. Apparently. And now go, um... Back into the sort of central area-ish, and then just go to the very left to Merleycroft, or whatever, you know, this part. Put one of the golden eggs in any of the offering baskets. Again, and then press the B button again to smash through any dialogue and any cutscene, as we already know. Um, that'll open up, so climb straight up the ladder. Press high. Oops, there we go. And then just smash through and exhaust all the dialogue, quick as you can. A, B, A, B, A, B. Just smash it all out. A, B, A, B, A, B, smashed all out. Okay, job's done. Now we're going to jump back down. Put the second golden egg in, and then collect the third golden egg from the right-hand side there and put it in the last basket. So there we go. Again, just keep making sure that you're doing those manual saves at every couple of scenes just in case, because it's so easy going this fast to miss something. So pick up the yellow stained glass from the stained glass window. Drop down, and this is exactly what I meant. I actually missed the art the first time here. Uh, pick up the axe from the right-hand side wall. Then interact with the art on the left-hand side wall. And then interact with Big Kurt McDog himself. Now choose, I'm okay, I forgive you. Um, hey, about this art. What is it? Can I have it? I like it how it matches your decor. Catch you later, Curtis. Now we can grab the art from the left-hand side. Again, I missed this one earlier. But, of course, all the manual saves I did come in handy. Because that would have pissed me red off. Right. Again, just keep clicking the forefront of the screen. Or the bottom of the screen to just run. Run! Come on! We obviously don't need to be going left into the old snake pit this time. So we're just going to keep going right. Right. Righter than right. Right up for that right tree. Right again, uh, so we get into Shell Mound. Hello. Keep going right, Shell right, 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 right. Oh, mamma mia, mamma mia. Oh, mamma mia, let me go. Speak to the mayor. Come on, you balding bitch. Come on, you bitch. Right, because you look like a mayor. Um, so, um, hey, about that bucket hat, and it looks great on you. Very fancy. That gives us the bucket. Press the B button to back out. Jump back down. Go to the right and then up the stairs to Alwex. And again, this is why we had the peach for earlier. So smash through all this and then just choose. Can I? Uh, hey, can I get you guys something? Maybe uh, some more holy tear gas. Well, can I go inside? And then I don't know. It just looks cool. Then press the B button. Get the peach out from your inventory and then use it on any one of the guards. And then we can go inside and speak to old Tenhead. 
Ten Head Alex. Uh, this is where, of course, we put the art, so make sure to get the art out of your inventory. Use it on the pedestal on the right-hand side, and like I said, old Eleven Head will appear from nowhere. Um, grab the top um, pieces, grab the two pieces behind you. Put the laser one in the second one, and then the yellow stained one in the top one. That's the death ray bit done. So, good job. Again, keep just keep spamming the B button there to smash through any cutscenes. Pick up the driftwood from the beach just next to Plankton's chum. Chum is fun. And now use the um, tear gas gun, fish gun thing that we got with the chum is fun. Now just go to the right a little bit and use it on the... X Factor hopefuls right here. Now pick up the perfume quick as you can. And now we're going to go to the left. We will be using the perfume in just a little bit. We've got one more little, couple of little things left to do. So you go to the left again. And we're going to go to the uh, Curtis's house this time. So sorry. Sorry. So straight into Curtis's house. Um, open up and give him the stool. And he's going to be a lot happier as old Whiskey Red Nose. So happy. Ooh, Sailor. <laughs> Uh, as he looked at his boots there, so get straight out, and then run, run as fast as you can, you can't catch me, I'm the Velahead man. Go to the right, again, as Vela, we don't need to go to the left and interact with the snake, we just need to go to the right. Uh, mess around now with the um, tree, so put the axe on him, and then press B to back out of the conversation, use the bucket on his nose, and then just use the stool. So he gives us the bucket of sap. So we should have the bucket of sap as he spewed into us. So now go down. See, we're already... We're, we're getting there. Um, again, hopefully you'll be making your manual saves enough. So use the perfume on yourself. And then what you need to do is use the bucket of sap on the mayor. Again, during the main game, we did it in a couple of different orders. But this is just the order it went in this time. So make sure you use the perfume on yourself, the bucket of sap on the mayor... And then we can choose, I need to enter the Maiden's Feast. And of course, we need to do the boss fight. Again, always worth making a manual save in case something happens. You uh, die. I don't know if you can die. But in case something happens, you mess up, etc. So as you can see, I'm on 19 minutes already. So use the Death Ray on him. And then just use it again on three out of the four legs. You've got to wait for it until it goes red before you can shoot. And then Mog Trotter is going to lap us up. So, quick as you can, get your ladder out, ladder out, put it in his mouth, use the death ray again, put it in his mouth, and that'll be the end of the first act. So, for me, um, it ended up being 12 minutes for Vela, including this cutscene. Now, this is one of the skippable, unskippable cutscenes that we can't uh, skip, because we need to choose either Shay or Vela. Uh, we end up going with Shay for Act 2 again. Um, so you can't do anything for just a couple of minutes. But after this cutscene, um, it ended up being 12 minutes playtime for Vela. That's, again, including this cutscene. So 21 minutes altogether. So just watch the cutscene for the time being. So again, we are going to choose Shay once more. Now, very importantly, when we uh, regain control of Shay, again, smash through all the cutscenes, all the dialogue, etc. But do not make a manual save here. Because if you make a manual save here, and you have to go back, if you mess up and you go back into Vela's thing, basically it adds an extra two minutes on. So wait for another couple of scenes, and then make a manual save. I'll tell you where it's kind of safe to do it. So, immediately when we get to go to the left, into Shellmount, pick up the Hexy Pal... And then we're going to go to the left. Again, ignoring Crawl and the Mayor, which is going straight to the left. And to the left again. So, of course, this is Act 2 now, remember. So, 
what we're going to do from here now, thi now this is where you can actually manually save it um because you'll be safe from now uh, but yeah for some reason if you made a mistake and went back that you would have to watch the same cutscene again, so it would act like you've watched the same cutscene twice, which would give you four minutes, uh, which you're just not needed. So, this is another unskippable part. You go to the left of Curtis's house, interact with the snake, and you just got to wait until the dude gives up because he is weak ass, man. Mr. Huggy, but it's time to let go now. Well, uh, seriously, you better let go. Oh, not kidding around, Mr. Huggy. I think it won't be much longer now. Ech, Jesus Christ, finally. Right, so make sure to pick up the snake. Then make sure to pick up the flyer in Curtis's mailbox. Oh, run, 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 you little bee snitch. Run to uh, Curtis's mailbox. Pick that up. Press B to smash through the cutscene and just jump back. You, again, remember, we should have a flyer. It, we're on to a flyer, baby. Go to the right. Go to the left. Take him back now, y'all. Beep, 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 beep. Right, right again to Shell Mound. And just go to the right again. Go to the right again, go to the right again, go to the right again. We're going back up to Alex's ship. So smash that ship square in his dip. Meh, I said dip. So why are you dressed like me? Blah, blah, blah. Just exhaust all the dialogue options. Sometimes it's easier just to smash the dialogue options instead of uh, looking for specific ones. So okay. smash all them. And then we get another item, that hyroscopic Gy Geronimo kind of thing. I already forgotten what it's called. My scientist brain is not working. Uh, go over to the mayor and then give him the schmatic. Or give him the snake first, sorry, of course. Because he ain't going to do much if he's choking. <laughs> if he's choking on balls to death. So, now he's given us the flute. Give him the schematic. Then choose, I think, sand is the perfect material. And that one is all good, so jump down. And then from here, we're going to go to the left again. Back to the talking tree. Back into the talking tree. Use the um, sand piece in the sick on the floor. The hypodermic space needle, whatever the hell it's called. And then use the uh, poster with the tree. And that should uh, throw it up a bit more. So now we should be good. Um, it's covered in sick now, which is delicious. Go to the left. Go to Curtis's house. And then choose space. What are you making? How, how long have you been into? Again, we're just smashing through the dialogue this time. Again, just press A, B, A, B, A, B. It's just easier instead of uh, looking and wasting potential... Uh, Potentially precious seconds. So give him the sand. He now gives us the hypodermic space needle thing, whatever the feck it is. And now we're going up. Remember, we have to do the random knot puzzle in a bit. So make sure that you've got that up on Google. All the random lot uh, knot puzzle locations. Uh, but we're just going to head back past Fadur for now. Go into the central area a bit. And go to the right. Where we're going to see Rocky and McGiggy. Hello, McGiggy. Wanna buy a cupcake? So, I want a cupcake. I um, I support you, blah, blah, blah. Well, bye. We'll just press the B button to back out. Then go to the back of the cloud. We're going to talk to the old man, Beast Ender. And then choose the money option. And then press the B button to back out. Um, uh, you can choose. You frosted all the cupcakes yourself. You, I'm not sure if that makes too much of a difference, though. Uh, so, we can just choose the money option and then back out. And then give the coin, of course, to Rocky and McGuggy. <gasps> she said burlap. So give the coin to them. That gives us the cupcake. Now we can go all the way back to the left. Sesame Street looks weird today. Like they're on a big orgy. 
Right, now what we do, can do is give the cupcake to um, Vela's dad and Walter Ur on the uh, Cloud Shoes platform at the right there. And of course, Walter and his big fat nose is going to uh, lick it off. Give it back to us. So go back down, go back to the right. Oh, it's a fun thrill session, this one. Go to Grandpa Beast Bellender again. <coughs> Excuse me, and now give him the cupcake. Now we've got the cane, so we can just back out. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm a white, pasty, pale man. And then, as soon as we can, go to the left again. Keep double tapping the A button there to smash through that a little bit quicker. Right, from here, what we can do is go to the central sort of area, this central woody bit, and then go up to the left-hand side past Jesse. And uh, just go through here again. Try to avoid falling in the clouds. Keep making your manual saves as well every couple of scenes or so. Speak to the fish gods and choose the top option and the top, top option again. And then a top option again. And then press B to back out. Interact the cane with them. That's good. Now we're just going to, before picking up the rope, we're going to fall down. And we're going to go to the left. And we're going to see Gus and a whole bunch of fruit. Fruit. So we're going to ask him, what's that sticking in the fruit? Hey, can I borrow that little fruit tapper? And job done. Remember to pick up a peach as well. So you should have a peach and the fruit tapper. So just make sure that you've got those two items in your inventory there. Again, if it turns out you don't, make sure to just reload your manual save. Make sure to get the peach and the fruit tapper. Climbing back up the tree, picking up the fish robes, and then walking all the way back out to the right. And then interact the fruit tapper with Jessie's egg. She's in pure 4am nightclub mode again. And then pick up the eggshells off the floor. <laughs> Next, go down the ladder at the forefront, the bottom of the screen. And then interact with Twilight. They look in love. Just saying. Right, choose. What were you guys talking about? Maybe he was in a hurry. S algebra. Uh, swinging. Or I think at least your costume is cool. And do you think you could make me one? Then give her the um, baby astronaut thing. Sorry, the conversation sort of uh, dwells a bit. It just sort of goes a bit nuts. Then give her the fish robes. That gives us the adult size hazard radiation suit. Now we can go back up the ladder. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And now we go to the left. And this is where we're going to start seeing... Again, very important to make a manual save right here. Now you have to wait until the character stops uh, stop moving altogether to make a manual save. The reason I'm showing you this manual save on screen is now we're coming up to the random knot puzzle. So make sure you've got a browser open on your computer, laptop or phone with pictures of all the random knot puzzles. And again, make sure to take a picture of the random knot that uh, Fadur is going to talk to us about. So again, it could be literally anyone. Um, one out of eight. And remember, we've got to do the three... Uh, not diagrams later on as well so make sure that you've got again a browser open with all of those open uh, just so we're not uh, pissing about too much but again it doesn't matter if you're pausing the game and then having a look that's also fine just don't waste too much time actually in game so climb on the ladder okay then choose to speak to Fidur and then stay uh, can you rescue uh, can you untie that bow sorry on Harmony's Cloud because it's in the way of us saving him douchebag what else do you think? So remember to take a picture now of this um, knot. So there we go. So make sure to take a picture of this knot. And now we can just go, hmm, sounds bad. So press B to back out and then go down the ladder a couple of times again. Remember, we need to go back to Shell Mound now. So we're going to go back to Curtis's house, back out of the house, and then all the way to the right to speak to Coral. So, when we get to Shell Mound, let us speak to Carol, and then choose, you seem good with your hands, know anything about knots, and then choose whatever specific knot it is for you. Um, obviously, you're not going to get an achievement for it, but if you're wrong, it, it may just take a while to, you, you're just wasting precious seconds, etc. So, now go back up to the right to uh, speak to Alex. And that's the reason I still make manual saves, because some of these puzzles that are random, you don't want to waste too much time on them. Um, speak to Alex, kind of borrow your pencil. 
and then choose OK, see you later, go back out to the left, go back down the stairs, and then go to the left again. What we're going to do is obviously give Carol our Pencilii of Friend Trillies. So give Carol the pencil. Job done. Thanks very much. Happy days. All done. Uh, speak to her again and then choose. Um, did you see that? Oh, in fact, no, sorry. No, we don't have to speak to her again. We've already got the uh, diagram of her. That's what I was looking for then. So we've already got the diagram of Carol, so don't worry. We can just keep going to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. Back into Curtis's house. Back into the top left corner of Curtis's house. And then, again, this is where the ran other random knot puzzle is. So, again, just make sure you get the... Again, I know I've said it a couple of times before, but make sure you get the browser open so you've got the three in one. Right, now let's choose... Um, uh, speak to further, and then choose... Let's give that uh, try, uh, not another try. And, again, make sure... So, for me, this time it was... Um, um, I don't actually know what this one is. Uh, what's the first one? Anyway, <laughs> I forgot what the first one is. But again, just make sure that you've paused the game here at least. Again, typed it in on Google, Broken Age, um, Random Knot Puzzles, and you're just choosing the specific one. You don't get punished, of course, for making the wrong one, but it just takes a little while longer. Um, then again, it might just be easier to just spam the A and B button, actually. It could just be easier to spam the A and B button, but I wouldn't advise that. Just make sure to choose the right one so you're not wasting too much time. So for me, it's Poke the Clown in the Eye. And then it's pull the finger, and then it's she loves me, she loves me not. So make sure to get those done uh, pretty much ASAP, and we end up back in Alex's ship, so we can go back down, back down, 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 down. Right now, go to the left. Go to the left now, mate. You know, man, no, you know. Go to the left now. Go all the way to the left to the tucking tree, all the way to the tucking tree. Okay, we need to get the fish off him. So again, we need to use the joke. So don't worry. I understand why you're so mad. Just keep spamming the um, um, exhausting all of the options as well. If you think that's easier, just to press A and B. Uh, so again, we're going to make a manual save just in case the joke doesn't come up. So basically, the remember the one from the main game, the uh, pine tree or whatever? Yeah. So, but this time, in fact, no, we've got... What's the smallest full-grown tree you've heard of? I've seen one no bigger than my hand. And then choose a palm tree. Of course, just have a look at the... Uh, just have a look at Google's for the other one there. Um, but make sure to pick up the fish before moving on. Because we don't need to speak to the tree again after that. So apologies about that little bit of uh, th um, confusion there. Uh, you just need to tell him the joke. And then pick up the fish. We can move on. Give the talking fish to Corolle. And then give the crochet hook to Carol. Okay. And then choose, but please promise to leave some fish in the ocean. And now we have to do the random puzzles. So speak to Shay's dad. What's cooking? Good looking. And then how's the hull punch coming? Um, how do you change pH? And then we can just press B button to back out. Uh, put the spoon in. Remember, we need to have a look at this cutscene to make sure and uh, to have a look at the pH balance. So again... I've got five. It can be random for you, but remember, eggshells add three, and peaches take away two. I do make another manual save, just in case um, it does take a while, but that's all you've got to do. So whatever number you're at, pause the game, make the math calculations. So for me, it's like, um, I think I add two eggshells and then take away four peaches, something like that, to, to get to seven. But remember, the pH balance needs to get to seven. So eggshells add three. Peaches uh, take away two, so whatever number it is for you, just do the maths, and your mum's a good un. So, after you get that one done then, now we are coming to the most random bit again. So, we're going to manual save again. It's the random puzzle, but hopefully you've got an idea. Hopefully I explained it well enough last time and that you've got an idea of what to do. So, remember, if you're uh, starting again or whatever, make sure to draw six circles in a hexagon shape like your hexipal. And then what we're going to do, again, I'll show you where it goes from blue. 
which was from 0.6 to 0.2. The yellow wire, which is wire number two, from 0.4 to uh, from 0.5 to 0.3. And then the red wire, which is the last one, from 0.1 to 0.4. So just remember that one. Um, so again, write write that down as well in your little notes or on Microsoft Paint. And remember, the randomness of the puzzle comes from when you put the hexi pad on the charging station and you've just got to connect the dots again. Um, I don't think I'd show you the picture on this particular one, sorry. So if you want to, again, just type in Broken Age um, Hexipal Wiring Random Puzzle to get the photo of all of the connections that we need to make. So after we give uh, the suit to Alex, put the wire on the Hexipal and then open up the Hexipal again. What we're going to do, remember, the first wire, the blue from 6 to 2. From 5 to 3, the yellow one, and then from 1 to 4, the red one. And then just put the Hexipal on. Again, of course, remember that you can now pause the game. So this, it just comes in extreme handy. When you get the random puzzle, again, it will be completely random for you. Pause the game so you're not wasting any time. And then you can really take your own time at it. But again, what you need to do, especially for the ones later on, draw the shapes in what you see. So for me, from 0.6 to 0.2 was the three diamonds and the upside down triangle. Um, 0.5 to 0.3 was the up and down arrow and the left and right arrow, etc, etc. So now I've got um, exactly what I need and what I know what to do. So for me, this time, it was 0.1 to 0.5. Again, make sure that you've written down all the shapes as well. Very important to do that. Uh, yellow one was 0.4 to 0.6 and red was 0.2 to 0.4. Give him a little try and basically it's worked. So now we can give the Hexipal to Alex. As long as that Hexipal in your inventory is smiling, you know you've done it right. So there's that one and now that is Act 2 of Shaden. Thank God. <laughs> So, act to Vela, smash through the dialogue, smash through the dialogue, smash through the cutscenes, <laughs> smash through the dialogue, smash through the cutscenes. <gasps> oh man, I need a rest after this. Go to the right. Again, we got this little bit of trial and error puzzle happening here. So, pick up the helmet from the white fisher. And then choose the knife, use it with the hose on the right hand side. Next, use the short hose on again. This bit is the trial and error part, of course. So, we use it on the right one. Um, I just try it again because it worked for me last time to be on the right hand side. So I went out um, put the sh and then I put the ho uh, hose on the bottom to the top one. Didn't work. But again, for whatever reason, it was the middle one and the top one on the right hand side which seemed to work. So try that one first and then hopefully that might work well for you. Climb up. Press B to skip. Uh, press the knife. Get the knife out and use it on the hose to get the long hose. Again, not sure if this bit's a bit of trial and error, or if this bit works every time, first time. But this time I used the hose on the top. Not the... Get off, you son of a... Dead, wasting my goddamn time, you butthole. Uh, anyway, now we're done. I use it on the top of the right one, and then the, to um, the top of the left one. And for whatever reason, that seemed to work. Don't know if I just got lucky with that one, or if it works every time. Now, here, it is important to make another manual save, just in case that you end up wasting time and wasting minutes trying to grab these items. But remember, you've got to wait until Shay is basically um, stood the right way up, more or less. Uh, grab the hand, use the hand, use it on the boot. Again, wait until Vela is the right way up, sort of head up. And then the thumbs out the way, then use the hand on the boot. And then use the hand boot on the giant hand when sh when Vela is the right way up and the uh, hand is open, like so. But again, if you're wasting any time or you think that was a bit too long, reload your manual save, go again. Otherwise, we can just come back in. We're back into the sp <laughs> spaceship for the first time. Ah, gish gosh, gish gosh, man. This is hard. Hard on the old voice. Go through to the left-hand side door, into the right corridor. Keep walking to the left. Come on, Vele, you slow-ass bitch. Come here and we ain't got our day, man. Move the obstacle out of the way and we can just leave the obstacle there for now. Go through to the left single door. And blah, blah, blah. Yep, go through to the next door to go into the sort of kitchen area. But we're going to interact, remember, with Shay's... Shay... No, in fact, we're going straight to the left. We're not bothering with Shay's mom this time. Because that is too much um, wasted time talking to her now. So go through into Marek's vent. Um... Go and interact with Marek. Again, just keep spamming the dialogue. You can't actually just back out, so I just keep spamming the dialogue there. Because um, you, you have to talk to him 
uh, for some reason in this bit, for whatever reason. Now we can go through the left-hand side door. Almost four hours in, Jesus Christ. Uh, go to the left a couple of times, in, and now we head into the trophy room. What we're going to do is head into the teleporter room. Basically, we still need to talk to Shay's mom. It's got it going on. She's all I want, and I've waited for so long. Vela, can't you see? You're just not the girl for me. Uh, but of course, we need to make her head bigger. Um, so, go left. And then we're going to go to the right. And then we're just going to keep spamming the A button to go as right, as far right as we can. Um, this is just me trying to look for a manual save. Oops, accidentally uh, moved the obstacle out of the way. Uh, but move the obstacle back. Remember, very, very important to make sure that you move the obstacle back there. Um, otherwise, you'll be wasting time with this whole trash shoot uh, serial thing. Anyway, go back into the, through the teleporter. That's going to give us giant head numero tuno. Job done. Right, what we can do now is just go all the way back to the left. And all the way to the left door as well, back into the kitchen area. <laughs> kitchen. Nobody says kitchen. I'm being a mong, sorry. Right, to the left. Now we're going to speak with Shay's mom. Now you can, I think you can skip the first bit, but not the second bit. So, choose, so just, again, just keep spamming the, the dialogue. A and B. Make sure to choose Mr. Here, though. Or just Mr. Then Huggy. Please, can we not do this? And then you can't actually skip this next bit of dialogue. But remember, it is purple, size 4, and polka dots. So for the next question, it's purple, size 4, and polka dots. Question. For safety, I used to make my son new space boots every year until his ninth birthday when he insisted on machine-made boots from the replicator. As he would surely remember, I tried to keep things fresh by never repeating a color or a pattern. So, please tell me what was the color, size, and pattern of his very first space boots. Purple. Size. Polka dot. <gasps> Right, so again, spam through the dialogue. A, B, A, B, A, B, 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 A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. Then choose the screen. A, B, A, B, A, B, your way through this with old alien giant 27 head. Then choose the central command or the central console. And remember, we still have to do that other weird achievement as well. So unlock the kitchen door. Go to the left. And then interact with the debris, which is on inflatable Shea. Oh, and it's right on the wiener part as well. That must, that must have pinched a bit. Right, uh, click the right arrow. Don't worry, inflatable Shea would have already gone into the kitchen. Um, right arrow again. Uh, unlock the Space Weaver's door, the red door. And then go right again. Um, interact with the Avalanche Ice Door. Don't worry about the other door. That can stay locked. It's the only the ice cream door that we need. And, of course, unlock this runaway train mission door as well. So, again, make another manual save. Uh, what we have to do is, of course, get this guy over by using the flash on the sun. Now, if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. But what I found was it took too long to start. So by the time he starts walking back, he actually does go back into the next room. So by the time you try getting him back, it, it just... It's probably worth it. It's, it's worth it and easier to just um, do it all in one fell swoop like we were going for the achievement again. Because if he starts walking back, it is a bit of a kerfuffle and it is a bit of hassle to get him back again. So, let's do this. So, click the electric symbol. So, click the light symbol and then the sun symbol a couple of seconds afterwards. Then click the uh, electric symbol on the left. And then as soon as little Hexipal goes to, be uh, goes to start fixing it, uh, get the other electric symbol. And uh, what I forgot to mention was you have to click the left arrow... Um, as soon as Hexipal goes through to the next room. So apologies in the main game. I forgot to mention that one. Right, so choose the sun and then immediately choose the electric symbol. A couple of seconds after, choose the next electric symbol up there and the sun at the top. So you have to do those four in quite quick succession. Um, if he starts walking back, I'd probably just reload your save and then just try again. As soon as he gets under the obstacle, click the next electric socket and then choose the next electric one as well. And then, as soon as he starts walking to the left, remember to use the left arrow. Oi, oi. Right. Uh, electric at the bottom, electric on the left, and then quickly at the top there. Electric, and then the top right. 
choose that one and then go down and smash that one out as well. That is how you get past this bit. So now we should be good. There's no reason for us to... He's not. We're not going to make any mistakes. He's not going to start going back. So life is good. Um, so again, just wait until the little hexy pal fixes the control console or console command or whatever the frick. And then when he jumps down, smash the electric out by the door. That opens that one and then he's going to start walking through. Come in. Fella looks fantastic as the Teletubby son, doesn't she? Yeah, Deli Tubbies. Right, interact with the electric symbol again. Don't go left, you've got no reason to go left. And then, of course, he's going to get sucked off. Nope, sucked up, close enough. So go into the kitchen. And then um, choose the uh, taco pill, choose the option, of course. Then get the boom arm down. And that is the hexipal done. Use the electric socket again. And then cho um, choose the left arrow. <laughs> we're getting there, we're getting there. And then choose the electric option again, and that's basically done for this bit. So again, with no mistakes, we've done this in the quickest time possible. If there's a mistake, it can add a minute or two on. And a minute or two is really something that we don't have. So interact with the door. And then just uh, keep spamming the B button again to just skip all of these cutscenes, right, Mia? There we go, and now we're back. We're just going to go back into the central console command this time. Uh, because this time we're going to go back into the kitchen. And we're going to mess around and set things up for us like we didn't do earlier. So hit the hexagon until it says good morning. Boom, I'm down. And then once again, and then pause it when it gets kind of low. About there. Perfect. Right, press the cross button or the X button to get out. Make sure to pick up the salad fork after we speak to Hope. So A and B all the way through Hope. And then make sure to pick up the salad fork, which is in the salad. Oops, I accidentally... Uh, Got Marek out there. <laughs> so, out we go. And now what we can do is go into the kitchen again. Um, uh, pick up inflatable Shea. We're going to walk back. Sorry, I thought we were doing the cereal bit there. But no, we're going to pick up inflatable Shea. We go into the right. And we're going to go into the right room. Because we're going into the avalanche equim room. Equim. Right, from here, just get out inflatable Shea and stick your gooey, creamy goodness right inside of the inflatable Shea with your whipped cream gun. And then put on your duck cloud shoes and we need to go up and use the the helmet on the dump truck ice cream. And as soon as we do that, um, go back to the double doors and go out quick as you can. Oh, my jaw's aching now. It's like I've been pilled up all night in a nightclub. Uh, right, so going out of there, going into the teleporter room to our left. And this time we're going into the central teleporter, back to the fusion orbis room. Uh, so we've got about 10 minutes or so left now. About 9, 10 minutes left. So go through here. Remember to go down. Oh, come here, busy, me. Remember to go down here and then use the ice cream on the fusion orb. Won't do it once, so you have to do it twice, and then go back down again. And then go all the way to the right. For some reason, we can't skip this particular bit, but, you know, flap them. And then go back through the teleporter, and now we're going to do the whole serial trick. So remember, you should have moved that obstacle back, um, so the serial hoover maniac can't get through as quickly as we can. So head back to the left, and we're going into the kitchen. Come in, there we go, there we go. Um, now again, it's probably worth, just like last time, like I did, it's probably worth making a manual save, just in case for, it, for whatever reason you end up wasting time because you didn't get there quick enough or whatever. You should be fine, but again, always worth making a manual save. Now as you can see, I'm on 43 minutes. And with the finale being about 4 or 5 minutes, we need to get this done uh, by at least 52, 53 minutes. So, as soon as we're out, go back into the teleporter room. Um, all the way to the right-hand side teleporter, of course. And then immediately, as soon as you're out, just keep spamming the A button there on the Hoover weird thing. And he's going to chuck some dirty cereal at us. That'll do. Put the ice cream bomb inside the trash chute. And that's going to get us blowing, baby. Go into the runaway train room on your left. And then give the inflatable shade straight to the Tom Hanks 
uh, kind of looking thing. Keep spamming the A button. Yeah, let's do the wave. Uh, this bit you cannot skip, but, you know, it only adds seconds, so I'm not too concerned. Although, you know, come in, come in. Come in. Come in. Okay, right, we're good. They heard me go nuts. Right, choose, uh, use the fork and the yarn, and then go through into the teleporter again. Hey there. And just saves literally like two seconds later on. <laughs> um, basically, what we're going to do now is go back into the space weaver's room. So, uh, if, yeah, so go into the trophy teleporter, the left, the left hand side one. And then go through the right hand side vent. It's easier instead of going through all the fake control room and everything. Um, interact with the panel on the wall. And remember, uh, we're just going to spam all the dialogue option again, just in case you didn't get the achievement last time. Spam through all the dialogue, put the dirty cereal on the floor, pick up the hook when it's underneath, and then interact with the uh, wires that are sticking out. Of course, we're going to get cutscene and blah, 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 blah. So go to the teleporter on the left. Man, I need a nap and, you know, sweet lozenge after this one. God damn, too much talking. Which people don't like. <laughs> anyway, back into the fake control room. Back into the um, room with the kitchen and Shay's mom. Uh, but we're going to go all the way left into Shay's bedroom. Oh my god, is that a crusty sock over there? Oh, god damn it, well I never. Back into Marek's vent. Or Marek's vent, or whatever you want to call him. Go all the way to the left. Now we should find some wire on his computer. In fact, no, sorry, not quite yet, but we're going to interact with the computer to lock him in. Pick up the star chart, which is on your left, and then we can head right again. Sp uh, press B to skip the cutscene, of course. And go right back outside of Shay's door on the floor. So go right, go right, and get out of your door. Go into the Space Weaver's rower room. And then interact the fork with him to wake him up. We're going to stick that right up his bum to snatch. And then use the star chart on him as well. We need to go down. We need to use the crochet hook. And then of course what we need to do is put it on the uh, second one in the middle row. And the second one in the middle row. And the top row, sorry. So second one in the middle and top row. That's how you do that one, of course. Um, now we can go to the left. And where do we go? Where do we go? Left. Sorry, left again. Back into the kitchen and Shay's mom bit. <laughs> it's, it's, it's getting overwhelming. So back into the real control room. A uh, whole bunch of cutscenes going to happen. And now that is that. So now we are on to the finale. So when we make a manual save, make sure to just take a look at how long you've got. This should only take four to five minutes, maybe six at a push. But remember, we've got a couple of bit of hexipal wiring to do. Um, so make sure that you've got your, um, we're going to choose Vela's ship again, by the way, so go right. But make sure that you've got your um, shapes and everything ready for the uh, Hexipal wiring. So talk to Shay's mom, get out of that one, pick up the Hexipal off the ground. And for some reason here, um, I decide to keep choosing to look. Now I've done this about three or four times when I realised how stupid am I, because even pausing it, the colours go a bit dim. <laughs> um, so you don't actually have to do this now, you can just crack on for now and then we can interact with this bit later on when we actually need it. For some reason I was just being a bit of a monkey dong, or a donkey mong, I should call myself. Um, but again, if you can, and if you're quick enough there, just write down where the blue one is, where the yellow one is, and where the red one is. Remember, it's from all the charred points, all the burn points you've got to go from. So use the detonated ray on the Chog Mothra, Mog Chothra type creature dildol pizza boot keep spamming the uh, B button there and we're basically going to end up um, going back to Shay yeah so we've done Vela's bit already now we're going to go back to Shay oh man come in there we go right go just go immediately down to the right and then immediately right again into the music room and of course we need to pick up the radio at the forefront of the screen <sighs> It's getting there, baby. Go to the left. Go back up. And then immediately we need to put our radio back to the Hexipal. And we're going to have the Hexipal. We're going to give the radio to uh, old 17 head right there. And then just go back down to the right-hand side. Down the ladder. Go to the left. And you're going to have these uh, little weird rogue creatures again. But we can go to the left again. 
So what we're going to do with this bit then, um, we're going to rewire the hexipal into the harp motion. So the harp um, mode that we need to do earlier. So again, again, you should have a, if you've got a browser open, just type in the um, the harp uh, broken age harp um, piece, and of course it'll be the same. Uh, it should be the same for everyone. But then you've got to just look at your shapes, and then of course match the symbols up. That's all you've got to do. Remember so. Of course, the reason we rewired it uh, uh, again last time was to get the uh, victory, uh, Raz's victory dance from Psychonauts, but of course we don't need to do that this time. So we're going straight into heart mode. So remember to put, look at your shapes, have it and compare it then with the harp mode sheet. And then of course what you should be able to do is just um, smash it out. For some, so for me, it was uh, two to one and then... Uh, whatever else I just played done. Now we've put it in the heart playing pattern. What we're going to do now is show the rogue hexy pals the, uh, our hexy pal. Again, we're only doing the harp stuff now, so it saves just a little bit of time instead of messing around. So make sure they're following you, and then we're going to go to the right, and then we're going to use the hexy pal on the harp of course, of course, of course, sand, 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 sand. No, 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 no. Right, let's go left. Oh, I don't know what the hell that was. We're going left again. Uh, remember to have a look at the switch first to pick up the mallet. I uh, don't think it makes a difference what order you do it in, but um, just pick up the switch, this switch first, which is a mallet, and then go around, and then we're going to turn the switch on. Boop! Goes the weasel. And we're going to go back around. We're going to go back down. And we're going back into the music room. Basically, we are going to pick up Hexipal right now. So, pick him up. Sorry about that, Rogue. Uh, please don't kill me on the way out, okay? Okay. All right, now we're going to interact with Vela again. Couple more things to do. We've literally got about three minutes left now. So, go to the left. Go, uh, just keep going left for now. We can't actually get into the kitchen. So, we're just going to go straight to Shay's bedroom. Got no time to wash that crusty sock. Sorry, buddy. Uh, head down into Marek's vent. This time, what we can do when we go all the way to the left and have a look at Marek's computer, there should be a piece of wire on there now. And there it is. So, pick up the wire. And I think you can't press B. I think you just have to keep spamming the A and B button before going back to the right. And into the vent once more. And then through the single door on your right. Right, right, right. So... Um, what we can do is just keep going to the right again. I was just trying to make a manual save. Every time you see me um, pause like that, I'm just trying to make a manual save. Uh, so through to the Space Weaver's door. Go down. And then use the wire on your Hexipal. So now what we can do, as you can see, we can now um, interact with the charred bits. We're going to do the harp playing pattern though. So whatever your harp playing pattern was, make sure that it is the exact same one as you did with Shay. So hopefully you either write that down or you'll just have to have a look again and um, with the harp playing pattern and just match up your shapes. Do that again. Use the Hexipal when you've got it good onto the Space Weaver's tapestry. Then we can go to the left. Uh, Shay's mom's got it going on, it's coming through, but we're just going to make a little sprint for it now. Um, in fact, no, there's nothing we can do. We're going to go back to Shay. Sorry, I thought we were going back to the real control room then. So we're going back to Shay. We need to interact the mallet with the hexipad. Now, of course, what we need to do is get Vela's. This is the burnt, charred one. So whatever Vela's is, from blue to yellow and red, whatever one Vela's was or is, of course, you have to make the exact same one. I believe anyway. Uh, so make sure that that one is good. The cutscene should appear. So again, apologies that that was a bit quick then. Um, but then we can just go to the left. Ah, now, actually, yes, this is very important. Again, the reason why I'm showing you this, I'm on 51 minutes, but I'm making a, a manual save. The reason being that you should... As long as you beat it in under an hour as we go upstairs, you'll get the one achievement, but you won't get the other achievement. So basically, I made a manual save, so you just got to do this last bit again, and then it'll unlock tidy. So just letting you know that one. Um, so we went back upstairs, used the Grabbing Gary remote. We're going to go back to Vela. And then we're going to use the Detonate the Death Ray. And that is basically now... Bop, 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 bop. The end of the freaking game. Yes!
And my god, didn't we all need that? Jesus Christ. So for me, I managed to do that in 51 minutes. So hopefully, you guys have got it um, pretty good as well, and that you've got it in under an hour. So, I mean, you know, nine minutes, that's quite a lot of time there that you had on yourself. So um, hopefully, you're literally roughly around the ballpark. Um, but again, as long as you've been making those manual saves and you've been sort of pausing and going along with what I did, then you should be okay. So, what we're going to do to get the final achievement to unlock, we're going to um, uh, load up our last manual save, which is why we've done it here, and just do the same thing again. So, we're going to go up, up, up and away, where achievements are a fantasy. Um, use the Grab and Gary remote, skip through the dialogue, uh, skip through the cutscenes again. Good work, Gary. Gonna be no Gary's left by 2050, because no, there's no such thing as a baby Gary now, is there? Uh, Vela, use the detonate array, and that is what should now get you the achievement, the final achievement, and the game's completion. So let's just take a look, make sure it unlocks. It should do. It absolutely should do. So you shouldn't have any problems. So if it didn't unlock the 3.3 achievement, didn't unlock the first time, uh, just reload in your last bit and do in that, that bit again. So ah, 0.27 percent, beautiful. Oh my god, we're done! Jesus. Anyway, thank you. There you go, 45 out of achievements. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I really do hope you enjoyed the game. I thought it was a fantastic game. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the, gui uh, the guide as well, and that it helped both the main game and the speedrun. Hope they helped you massively. If it did, don't, for course, don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Um... Uh, don't forget to check me on my socials as well, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. And again, huge, big, massive shout-out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. And for everyone who interacts with me on the daily, on Twitter, etc. Anyway, so again, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. This was a chunky boy, but I'll see you in the next Game Pass game. <laughs> big love.